and now fins on your feet to meet and greet the 2023 Hope College Flying Dutchman football team led by our head coach, Mr. Peter Sturzma. In Holland, Michigan, alongside Matt Wainer, my name is Nate Dreyer, and welcome to Hope College Football. And it's the first home game of this season, and for Hope College, it starts with an opportunity to try to bounce back this week. It was a loss the first week of the year against a nationally ranked opponent for Hope College. Uh, Matt, now they come back after that loss to Aurora last week. A real opportunity, first game at home, and a good chance for a bounce back, first and foremost, against this Loris squad. That's right, Nate. We're happy to be here, and this is a really exciting opportunity for this Hope College Dutch team. Coming off that tough loss last week, Aurora, a great team nationally, mm -hmm. um, and they did a lot of what they wanted to offensively. Had an opportunity to talk to Coach Pardonet uh, last night about what to expect. We'll get to that in a few minutes here, but really looking ahead, I know there's a lot of folks out here excited for another season of Hope College football. And uh, as they're celebrating all these Hope College teams from the other sports from last season, it was a really successful year. All right, National Anthem on deck. We're going to step aside, get to that, and then we'll get to all the talking points for this Loris versus Hope College matchup to open up the home season for the Flying Dutchman. Saturday afternoon, Loris College, the Dunhawks visiting the Flying Dutchman in Holland this afternoon again. Nate Dreyer, Matt Wainer here As with we this afternoon. Game, Matt, like you said, last week one of the keys in the loss to Aurora nationally ranked program for Hope was defensively. You talked to defensive coordinator Jacob Pardonet about uh, some of those you know, struggles. They gave up 38 points. It was kind of a game of runs. A lot of points allowed early, a lot of points allowed late. What were some of those keys, especially on the defensive side of the ball, that Hope has to shore up before taking on a very good, very balanced Loris offensive attack? Yeah, Nate, in my conversation with Coach Pardonet, and he said, really, it's, it's about them coming back to what their identity is. They battled a few injuries in the linebacking crew. Um, as well as the defensive backs. And he said last week was a game. They're in it in the third quarter down 17-10 and it went to 38-10, to ball game's over. So, you know, he felt like that was, like you said, a game of runs and a game that got away from them. You know, coming from Jake, he feels like this week he really wants to let the D-line work a little bit, slow the game down, allow some opportunities for the linebackers. The concern being uh, mainly when it comes to offensively for Loris, is their quarterback, Evan England, mm -hmm. coming off and off uh, in all-conference season last year. He's a guy that's going to want to move around. He'll be in spread. He'll be in pistol. He'll want to get it to guys on the outside. If it's not there, 
he's going to take off. Yeah, Anglin, the junior out of Wheaton, Illinois, last week, 28 of 33, 252 yards. He also had a couple of touchdowns, one on the ground, one on the air. So this is a guy that certainly has the ability to spread it out, can hurt you with his legs, can hurt you with his arm. Other side of the ball, talking about the quarterback position, let's talk about Hope College. Zach Trainer, the freshman. A uh, very highly touted guy. Three-star recruit, went to Eastern Illinois out of Wald Lake Western. Big kid, throws a really good ball. Also a pretty mobile guy as well, but struggled his first week. Moving into this Peter Sturzma hope system and some of the things offensively, I think that's the first thing to watch is I think you always expect to see a huge, huge jump out of a freshman from game one to game two, and he's got a chance to do with a lot of good weapons around him as well. It's a gift for us to see Trainer at 6'4", 210. I mean, he's a legitimate prospect. And this is a guy that you like to think, Peter Sturzman, hey, you're a freshman. Can I trust you a little bit here and there? I can't hand you the keys from the get-go. But can I give you some opportunities to show us that we're going to be able to trust you throughout the season? I think that's what they want to see from him. Loris, a team that, that struggled last week, giving over 400 yards. Um, on the defensive side of the ball and 41 points. So they had a, they had kind of a heartbreak, or not a heartbreak for, you know, they came back down yeah. 10 points, able to squeeze that one out 42-41. Yeah. And a team that in the you know American Rivers Conference really has traditionally been good. So I expect Lourdes to be a difficult matchup for Hope, but not one that, that offensively we should be able to move the ball. Yeah, absolutely. Steve Helmeniak, the head coach for Lourdes. And like you said, 42-41. They took down Benedictine, Benedictine last week. They were down 21-7 in the second. They scored that winning touchdown and then extra point with 48 seconds to go. So this is a team that is riding an absolute high into this contest here this afternoon as they go on the road to Holland and to Smith Stadium. Hope Athletics would like to give a big thank you before kickoff to our anchor partners this fall. LVZ Financial Planning, Lighthouse Title Group, the Holland Board of Public Works, Mimic Insurance. We are grateful for their support of Hope Athletics as we pursue academic success with competitive excellence and transformational experiences. Also, the latest Hope College stories and images are at your fingertips. Search Hope College Athletics on the App Store or Google Play and download the free Hope College Athletics mobile app powered by Sidearm Sports. All right, Matt, so getting ready for this one. And I always love the first home game of a year for a team like for Hope here because you can just feel that buzz and that energy. And these first couple drives as they get their defense and their offense each out on the field for the first time, there's going to be that little bit more palpable buzz that you can feel out of Coach Sturzman's team. And to speak about that buzz, Nate, you got all the athletes out from all the all of the other Hope College teams yeah. out there in the south end zone. And Nate, I mean... We've only got here in Holland, Michigan, what, four more weeks of good weather. Yeah. So everybody's got to come out to these football games before we're calling it in November and it's snowing. So so let's enjoy this beautiful fall day. Absolutely, and it is absolutely beautiful here today. Ball on the tee for the sophomore to Byron Center, Caden Balkin. He will get ready to send it away for Hope College in the home Navy Blues with the orange numbers and helmets. Pants in white and the traveling whites with the purple bottom and the gold helmet for the Dunhawks of Loris. Two deep men back. Balkan sends it away. And away we go. Backing into the end zone for the take back and angling to the 10 yard line before a great stop is made on the return and the by Terry Jackson and Hope College now will get their defense on the field as we will see this dangerous Evan Anglin led attack for the first time for Loris College. Like I said, Anglin had 250 yards passing last week and they have got a trio of dangerous backs. Last week it was led by Jamel Britt, a junior out of Chicago who put up three touchdowns. He was a real power guy for them. But this is a team, Matt, like you said, they will not be afraid to spread the ball and they go with Johnny Quezon, the second, their junior, the first tailback in this one. He's a very good weapon in more of a spread system. They work out of a three-man set. Anglin steps into the gun, and the junior out of Wheaton, Illinois, will get the offense going. This is Quezon up the middle, and he's engulfed just past the 10 on the first run of the contest. Like what we talked about before the game, the containment is going to be the biggest key for this Hope defense. As you can see, they want to work fast. As Coach Pardonet had had told me last night, they're, as they're already set up, and it's played two already here on second down, expect them to move it outside. England again from the gun. One of his favorite targets, the redshirt senior Michael Crawford. He lines up to the right. England drops the pass. His first attempt down the field of this contest is corralled in by Manny Brown, the junior. He had six grabs a week ago. He'll move the chains on his first reception of this contest. 
And again, like you said, Matt, this offense willing to work quick, and they stick out of the same base. Three receivers set the H off the right side. They motion Jacob Tedrow, that tight end, and H back, and they give it to Kaysan, who's engulfed with nowhere to go on the backfield. The entire front line able to get the shot on through, and a loss of a yard or two on first down. Great swarm there by Hope College. As, you know, we're trying to trust that defensive line a, a little bit. Kind of a, a, a tough read right there by England. We'll see here with second and long. That was the big sophomore, Caleb Parlberg, a standout at Caledonia, his time for the Fighting Scots, or in his time for the Fighting Scots, making that stop. Second and 13 to throw again. Good grab by the aforementioned senior Crawford to take it up to just shy of the 30-yard line, but that's what this team likes to do again. They're going to balance, run to pass, and quick hitters in the passing game. We've seen them a couple times. They like moving away from the short side of the field, too, I noticed. They want to always play towards their playmakers on these short, short plays. Expect them see another slant maybe or a slant and go on the outside. Jaheim Haynes, the senior, part of this very experienced receiving core, is the slot man, the only one that has knocked out the ball. This is out of the short pistol for the first time. Kaysan is the pistol back. Dropped a pass here again from Evan England. Showing off the wheels, rolling to the sideline, lobbing, caught by Haynes, and he'll turn it up over the 45-yard line, tackled from behind nicely right there, and the chains will move on ahead once again for Loris. Really just a well-designed play. England doing exactly what he wants to do early here. Kaysan with speed over the 50, has the 45, and with the stiff arm ridden out of bounds by Nick Flagler for a gain of six or seven on first down. That was Brad Reardon, by the way, on the last play, arranging to make that tackle the big freshman out of Hudsonville where he has starred the last couple of years. Again, it's back to the pistol and working quickly for England and company. This is Kaysan, and he's brought down right up the gut. Isaiah Hicks, the junior out of Grand Rapids Catholic Central, has got him rallied down at the 44, and it'll be a third down faced by this high-speed offense, and and Jamil Brett, the power back, will come in for his first look on the field of the game as Kaysan will go back to the sideline. And again, it's England out of the pistol. Hope brings the four down front and shows some pressure. Evan England throws out to Jamel Brett at the 45. Sent down by Micah Bush, stays on his feet. I think based on the mark, he's going to be just short. We'll have to wait to see what it's going to be. Nope, now they will move the chain. So Jamil Brett able to lower the shoulder against Micah Bush, the sophomore out of Unity Christian, and moves the chains. This pace is horrendous here <laughs> for Loris and, and Nadez. They're trying to get their defensive linemen fresh. Expect them to go even on a four-man front seven deep today. Anglin taking a bit of time. They stick pistol right here. Snap to the junior. Fate give to Britt. Drop to pass. Anglin looking deep for his senior Crawford. And he's unable to hang on to it at the five-yard line. Had the red shirt senior sprung home. Unable to bring that one in. And it's second and ten on a good deep shot from England. Well designed there by Loris. See Hope College forced to stack the box when they have running back Kaysan working to the outside, and he just sees it wide open. That was a gift and an opportunity. Absolutely. Crawford again, 10 receptions, 105 yards a week ago, so he does not drop passes like that one very often. Again, Evan Anglin, the junior out of Wheaton, Illinois, will give this time to Britt again. He had three touchdowns a week ago, and Britt is able to keep those feet churning on ahead to around the 37-yard line and a second or third and medium coming up for the Dunhawks now. They'll change out their unit, and they'll bring a little bit more of a spread look. Ian Brocious, the sophomore, one that will come on and help make the four-man set along with Terry Jackson. Back to the gun, Britt the tailback. Anglin dropped a pass. Now on the draw, he'll take it. Angling over the 35, has the first down to the 31. And right there, Matt, we talked about the wheels of Angling able to make something happen, does it right there. It's death by a thousand cuts in this first drive. You can't be too unhappy if you're Hope. They're doing what they want to do in terms of keeping the ball in front of them. They haven't given up the big play yet. But yeah, I mean, England just, he has so many options. It's so difficult to defend. Looks like we're going to have a quick break here. Yep, we have got a timeout on the field. We will take one at the same time. No score here in the first quarter from Hope. Yeah, I know. Uh, 
Uh, I said they're so fat. So fat, yeah. yeah. That's why I'm just giving it a few plays. Yeah. I, I don't want us to sound rushed. Too, yeah. You know. You're doing great. Oh, thanks. I'm rushed enough just to All right, out of the timeout. Evan England will get ready to go back to work once more. First and 10 up around the 30 yard line for this fast moving Dunhawks attack. They go back to the spread out of the pistol. In motion comes Kaysom. They go two backs in the backfield and England will drop to pass. Some pressure coming, dumps it off to Britt on the screen. Putting the moves on, getting his way on past the would-be tackler Brady Howe and just shy of the 25 yard line on the screen. Meanwhile, a little bit of action behind the play as well as England wants to keep things moving. Another thing to say here, another thing. Anguin from the pistol. Three wide receivers set. Tedro is the H-back of the tight end. Off to the left, the motion Tedro here. Anguin, give to Britt. Letting it develop and then get slung down off the edge as he's ridden down to the 25-yard line after a gain of one. Howe, who made the last stop, makes that stop as well. We tick under 10 minutes to go in the first quarter of this one. It'll be a third and four for the Dunhawks. Such a gift. Again, Angwin will work from the gun. Three receivers set right here, or sorry, from the pistol. Out of that four-man front, Hope will get ready to attack. Again, Tedro goes in motion. They'll try to set up the same look. Fate give to Britt on the RPO. Grabbed by Haynes, able to stiff arm his way past the 15-yard line. And it's another third down conversion by the sure-handed senior, Haynes. It's such a gift if you're a Division three school to have these kind of options offensively. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you think of having a guy like England, you trust. Look at this offensive line. They're massive, Nate. A big unit up front and a team that they're willing to spread it. They're willing to maybe go into some power sets sometimes and run it, but they especially love this sort of look right here. And it's Britt the power back in the backfield. Nowhere to go. Micah Bush, the sophomore, able to be the second man through to level him for a loss of one. And he goes back to second and 11 right here. Been really impressed with Bush early again. Mm -hmm. Young guy, sophomore out of Unity Christian. He was on that nearly state championship team a couple years ago there. And he's been really good early helping get up the middle and stop some of this run game when they've been able to have an up the middle run game. Yeah, good adjustments here by Hope College as they're starting to kind of stunt in the middle there a little bit more of their backers. Anglin dropped to pass again, gave a shimmy, looking for the end zone. Manny Brown able to haul it in. Touchdown, Loris. The Dunhawks strike first, a balanced attack and a quick attack down the field. And the junior, Manny, Manny Brown, 6'2", 165 pounds, able to haul it in. He's out of Fort Myers, Florida, and he's got the first TD of this one. So Scott Talmadge now, the sophomore, will get ready to come on for Loris and look to add the extra point. He was the man that had the extra point a week ago that won that game in the final 50 seconds of the contest. Snap down, hold is good. Talmadge went down and a flag came down after he was able to send that one on through. So we'll see the running into the kicker, what level of penalty that may be coming up, get that settled out. But 7 nothing. good start for Loris on that first drive for sure, Matt. Yeah, Loris, I mean, this is what we expected. It's what we talked about in the pregame. It's a team that's that's moving on the outside well, getting that, that run game going. You can see Hope College over there. They're going to have to go a couple deep as Coach Bartonet and the defense. Now time to kind of reset and talk about ways that they can contain a little bit better. And running into the kicking penalty, running into the kicker penalty is what is called. So five yards will be added on to this kick, and quickly the – Hope College return team will come out because now this offense is going to have to find an answer because we've we've kind of seen this first shot in the gauntlet laid out by Loris in terms of what they're going to be able to do offensively. And it could just be one of those days. You hope to make some adjustments defensively to try to keep up with them, but it could just be one of those days. Beautiful afternoon on a turf surface. Uh, it just may turn into a bit of a track meet, and Hope's offense is going to maybe have to find a way to answer a little bit. So Talmadge gets ready to send away. It's Brody Thompson, the terrific freshman. He was uh, out of Rockford where he was a star for them on 
the receiver position as well as in the return game for the past few years. So Talmadge descended away once again. Loris the early advantage, 7-0, and away we go once again. Thompson in the end zone will take, and he will knee. So here comes the Hope attack for the first time today, and here comes Zach Trainer for the first time again today. Again, 6'4", 210 pounds, Eastern Illinois transfer out of Wald Lake Western originally, and he was a very coveted prospect there, and he's one of those guys that you think about what he may have the potential to do, and it's why there was a deep list of quarterbacks that Coach Sturzma had to choose from this year, and there was quite the quarterback battle deep in the camp. It was this freshman that won because the potential, the ceiling for this kid, Matt, is so high. That's right. I think I, I'm just excited to see the, the decision making and see somebody that's got that size be able to, as a freshman, that's what's difficult about playing at this level. So let's see what he does here. They motion Castle, the H back, and it'll go on for the first carry to Elijah Smith. And the senior's able to drag it into a pile ahead for a couple yards. Smith, Strickland, the main two backs. We'll see it was mostly Strickland a week ago for Hope College, but Smith able to return into the lineup and the senior, originally out of Hastings, 5'9", 195 pounds, will be the one that will look to carry the mail today for this Hope College Flying Dutchman offense. Second and seven after a gain of three. They've got the 28-yard line. They go double tailback, split back formation from the gun. On the end around, Terrell Harris, the senior, making things happen over the 35 to the 40. Harris, a shifty run to the 50, where he'll get ridden out of bounds by Brett Bauer, the free safety. And that's exactly what Terrell Harris can do. Nine career touchdowns for the senior, and he is going to be one of the primary go-to guys for this offense because a shifty runs just like that. Maybe this is the beginning of that track meet we want, Nate. A lot of offense today. Schrainer gets to go to work again, back to their more base, three wide receiver, power spread set. Smith, the tailback, it'll be trainer to pass. Throwing left, caught by Holzer, the senior. Drugged down by a couple to the 42 yard line. Good gain of six or seven on first down as Holzer makes that stop. Or that, that grab, 6'4", 210, he's out of Okemos. Great job in pass, bro, by this offensive line. Got a highlight, 73, Nick Marsh, as well as 68, Connor Bovia, two guys, just big men up there, able to hold the line for Trainer. In motion once again was Harris. They give it to Smith with a burst of speed to the 35. He thought he had a chance for more, but he's got the first down. And the Hope offense working pretty well on the other side of things right now. You know, Loris played a game just like this a week ago, 42-41. They seem comfortable in this, and that seems to be a little bit of where this thing's going. Both teams continue to move the football very very well. Seth Lumen, the freshman, will check in for Castle here at H-back as Trainer gets the offense set to go. Again, they keep Thompson, the receiver, tight to the left side. He's the terrific freshman that we mentioned out of Rockford. Here is Trainer on the fate, given the roll. Trainer throwing, incomplete. He was looking for the, the diving Terrell Harris. It'll be second and ten at that 36-yard line coming up. Trainer look. To Coach Sturzman and company on the sideline right here. Seventh year for head coach Peter Sturzman with uh, Hope College, of course, so well known for his time at uh, East Grand Rapids before all the state championships and the success there and is looking to build this Hope College program into something really, really special and a talented group and a talented group of a lot of guys from West Michigan, from the state of Michigan as well. Here's Elijah Smith just shy of the 30-yard line where he is engulfed from all sides and it'll make it a third down and medium here. Nate, I can't speak high enough about Peter Sturzman. Mm -hmm the job he's done here in the last seven years, but also as a professor, got to take a class with him and philosophy of coaching and just beginning to understand what it's like to get to know him and as somebody that, that cares so much about kids, but also about about coaching. I learned a lot from my time, time with him. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, I think everyone has similar type of great words to say about him. Four receiver spread set. Here's Trainer working deep to the right side, intercepted at the 25 yard line. Josh Rydberg. He was their leading tackler a week ago, read it beautifully, and INT ends that hope drive. Massive interception. You can see their trainer just, he showed it with his eyes just a little bit too early. That was the right decision for him to go there. But you could tell he thought about it a split second too long. He, he had options, not a bad decision by him, just a tad late. Yeah, Josh Rydberg, who came up with the INT, the safety is one of 
the leaders of this defense. Like I said, 11 total tackles, led the team a week ago. He's a grad student. He is a very, very high IQ player. And now Loris will go back on the attack with 545 in the first. They already have the 7-0 lead. It's a give to Kaysan, spinning off the first wave of tacklers, but three more Navy shirts there to beat him in the backfield for a loss of a couple. Completely sniffed out by the D-line. D-line fresh, and I really like that unit. You know, Pardon A talked about them as a, as a group that's one of their more experienced, and guess what? It's a lot of sophomores. <laughs> yeah. A lot of sophomores, but that's that's the kind of a, a youth that is on this defense. Yeah, this defense, the offense, of course, has got some great young players as well. There's some bright times ahead for this Hope College team throughout this season and for the rest of uh, the next couple years. Evan England to the left side, unable to fully get the edge. He's brought down, and it'll be third down and long again. Great job by the Hope defense, able to get the outside and shut that down. Wow, Bush is impressive, Nate. Really impressive. I mean, to kind of break down like that, to be able to keep him inside, Anglin's a quick guy. I had the chance to follow Micah Bush. We, I did all of his playoff games uh, the year that they went all the way to Ford Field with Unity Christian. Flag out is there's going to be a offsides penalty likely coming here against Hope College. But back to my point on Bush, he was the leader of that defense, and he was in the middle of every single stop. If there was something in the middle of the outside, even of the field, he was right there. Encroachment with contact. Defense, number 92, five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. So they get Parlberg for that penalty, and it makes it third and a little bit more manageable. It'll be a third and seven right here past the 35-yard line for England and company, and certainly changes up a little bit of what this playbook may look like. Come on, Pritchett, the junior, who had six carries for 35 yards a week ago for Loris, will check into the contest at running back for the first time out of a four-receiver pistol set. Hope brings four down linemen with the defense spread out a little bit. England dropped to pass on third down. Pressure coming over the middle. Hauled in, in the plus territory. Michael Crawford again moving the chains. As sure-handed as they come, again, a completely unexpected drop earlier from this guy. He's the one they'll look for, and they're going to look to go quickly once again. It's Kalan Pritchett bouncing it outside to the 45 and ridden out to the 44-yard line as the tempo continues to quicken for the Loris attack. England knows exactly what he wants to do. And like I said, at this level, I mean, he's such a good decision maker. But you see, you just give him a little bit of time. He makes a beautiful strike on that third down throw. England look to the sideline. They'll stick out of the four receiver set. Haynes will motion. England, fake give in the backfield. Able to get away from the first would-be tackler, Wyatt Tucker, but he can't get away from a couple more. Guess who that was? Micah Bush in the backfield to help make that play. It's third down and long. Huge leadership. And now you see Hope College getting those starting defensive line in here. They got to put pressure on him. I'm expecting these linebackers to have to get back into a cover two possibly, but they're going to send those four, see if they can get a good pass rush. They'll spread them five wide here on third and ten. Anglin looking to go, and it looks like someone went early again. Wait to see the call. I think it may have been Hope College jumping, but the reaction from the offensive line from Loris may say the otherwise. Wait for the call. And it is an encroachment on Hope College, so it turns third and ten into third and five. Big mistake right there again from the Hope defense as they jump early again. Two times this drive. You can see already visibly the coaching staff not happy about that, making this a more manageable third and five for England. And we know third and the, five at the 43. With the playbook that Loris has, it opens things up so much more. If they bring Kaysan now back on the field, they'll be able to go back to their base three receiver pistol set right here. They motion Tedro. Anglin dropped to pass on third down. Got it to Kaysan over the 40. He's got the first down into the open field and walked out of bounds as he was hunted down by Brady Howe. First down, and they get speed in space, and they will go quickly once again. You could see that opening up from the get-go with the pressure all happening in the middle. They were expecting that option to happen on the inside. They just bounced it out for an easy first down. Kaysan again trying to shift up the middle, but... Unable to get anything. There is some laundry on the field on the far side. We'll wait to see what that call is going to be. Looks like a false start this time is coming up against Loris. So penalties on the offensive line for and defensive line for both squads right here. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 81, 
Five yard penalty, replay first down. And we see it with Loris, Matt. They love to go to a lot of the pre-snap snap motion. It's gotten hope a couple times, gets them. It's gonna be a big part of this attack. They wanna go quick. They wanna change the eyes of the defense as well. They make a mistake on their own front there doing so. Anguin will keep him tight to the line out of the pistol this time with a couple receivers left. Fate given a drop to pass. Evan Anguin clutching with a little bit of time. Throws as the pressure came. Manny Brown unable to hang on to it. A good play made on the ball defensively as well by Howe, who's been in on everything in the secondary, and that'll make it second and 15. As you said, when they work with this kind of fast offense, it comes back to they just trust England a lot mm -hmm. to be able to make these decisions. You know, they have a general set for pre-snap. These are our options. We'll go one of three or four ways. Otherwise, let's, let's give this guy the rock and let him make a good decision. Yeah, the junior who... I mean, as you said, was so well awarded last year, and he's coming off an unbelievable performance, 28 of 33 last week, and looking to match that a little bit out of a four-receiver set here. Throws left side to Brown. He's got it at the 21. Manny Brown puts the moves on, dives around the first down. Should be about a yard short. They'll mark him at the 15-yard line. But the shifty play of Manny Brown, the junior, 6'2", 165. We see it once again there in space. The near pick there by Howe. He yep. would have housed that one. Long look to the sidelines, Jamil Brett, the, the big junior tailback, 5'11", 220 pounds in the backfield. One of a trio of backs that Loris is willing to go to. Tedro in motion. This is Brett, breaking over the 10, able to get one more, diving to the end zone. Jamil Brett, touchdown! Wow. Had the first three TDs of his career a week ago. Gets one more here on a hard-nosed run from the junior out of Chicago. And it's a two-score lead early for Loris. Nate, that is a special cut. Yeah. Hope had the completely sniffed out. Everybody in the ballpark knew where that ball was going. And it just didn't matter. I mean, that was an unbelievable cut to the outside. Talmadge again will look to add the point after right here. And it will be Anguin to hold. So, Talmadge able to make it a 14-0 lead for Loris as the Dunhawks have been all over the Flying Dutchman early. A fast-moving and tough offensive attack has certainly been something to watch for Loris early in this one. Adjustments to make defensively, Nate, as we've talked about, and we expected this, this somewhat going into the game, but at 14-0, just put points on the board this drive. Let's, let's continue to work and continue to keep the ball in front of us defensively. Yeah, if your trainer heading out on the field, think we did a lot of things really well. I don't think there's a lot of identity shifting that needs to happen. Just you do the things you need to do, get the ball to guys in space, on the outside. I mean, trust that run game, trust those seniors to be able to give them the ball in the backfield and, and see if we can put some point, points on the board. So Thompson back to return. And trainer, you mentioned now three interceptions on the year, had two last week. So a good chance for the freshman to bounce back, get some momentum going. We know the talent he has. We saw it early in that drive, and Hope has got to find an answer here. Talmadge will send it away. Thompson will take it outside the numbers at the five. Thompson not able to get past the 20 as that one got strung out, and he was slung down by Nico Jamilio, the sophomore. So not terrific field position right here for Hope as they get ready to bring their offense on the field for the second time. Minute and a half to go in the first quarter. 14-0 Loris. Hope needing an answer at home. Coach Sturzman takes his time to get this unit out, and here comes Zach Trainer again, 6'4", 210 pounds of freshman. And it will be Chance Strickland, the junior, who had a touchdown, 86 yards rushing a week ago, that will work as his tailback to begin this drive. So the balance of attack between Strickland and Smith in the backfield continues. Castle will motion as the H-back. A give to Strickland, and the big junior over the 20 to the 21-yard line before he is corralled down inside of the defense that's very big, very experienced, and very good. Andrew Heffel, the senior, 220 pounds. Brandon Phelps, a junior, 5'10", 185. And then a guy like Dawson Charlie, a grad student at six foot, 200 pounds. They're going to be really, really tough, Loris will be, to try to run the football against as Hope will line it back up out of a three wide receiver set again here. Second down and eight. Trainer pitch to Strickland. 
Strickland got the 25, diving for the 26 yard line. Stop made by Brett Bauer on the outside. It'll be third and medium. Meanwhile, Loris player also down behind the action at the end of this play. And as uh, we're finding that players and see the situation, you know, Nate, it's a it's key, I think, right now that Hope College getting the ball on the outside. Mm -hmm. As when they're working outside of the tackles, it's been a little bit more effective than when they're trying to go up the gut. Yeah, injury was to Milo Collier, the senior defensive lineman. He is back up to his feet, and the Hope College attack is back out. Big third and four right here. 43 seconds to go in the first, and Hope really desperately, I mean, tough to say that this early, but really looking for a conversion at this early point in the game to keep this drive going. Zach Trainer dropped a pass. The freshman rolling, looking, hauled in by Holtzer, first down, Hope. Great job to rove and find the leaking senior, first down, Flying Dutchman. Great movement right there by Trainer. Comfortable outside of the pocket. He likes to move it out there. And like I said, using the play side to his advantage, being able to work towards the field. We tick under 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. 14-0, great start for Loris and a three-receiver set. For Zach Trainer, the freshman gets ready to go to work. Give to Strickland. Over the 40, gets hit hard, but he's got the 43-44 yard line. Five seconds and less, and that should do it for the first quarter. 14-0, really good start for Loris offensively. They also had the pick to throw in as well. A couple of touchdowns and a couple of touchdown lead for the Dunhawks. We're going to step aside here at the end of the first quarter. Be right back here from Holland and Ray and Sue Smith Stadium. A fresh 15 minutes on the clock. Duhawks lead. Hope 14 nothing after the first. Trainer dropped a pass, clutching the freshman, looking deep for Harrison. Overthrows him at the 15 yard line, and it'll be a third down and four coming up. But Hope taking their shot at the dangerous senior out of Whitehall. Love taking that shot. He had a step on him. He was right there, just a little bit out of reach. But a wonderful look right there by Hope College. Trainer long pier to the sideline <laughs> as they'll get the unit changed out a little bit right here. See Zach Goldie come on as the tight end for the first time for some action. Third and four, 43 yard line trailing by 14 to the Dewhawks here for the Flying Dutchman. They go four receiver set. Trainer, pressure coming immediately, took a big hit, down he goes. No time to think about anything. The bull rush was in his face. Down goes trainer Sean Doyle, the grad student, able to help bust through right there, along with Brandon Phelps. And it'll be fourth down, and the punt unit's on the field. Big risk, big reward by Loris. They're sending both backers right up the middle, and it pays off as trainer gets confused as he sees the rush, has no time to make a decision. Really paid off right there for Loris. Dual punters of Flagler and Dean back here for Hope, getting ready to send this one on away. It will be Flagler booting this one on away and trickling its way on towards Ian Barocious, who will corral it. And here comes the Dewhawks offense again. Loris has been 
up and down the field quickly so far in this contest, led by the terrific junior Evan England. And Hope's defense here is going to have to come up with an answer, Matt, because you cannot go down three scores at this point. Need a stop, need a stop, need a stop any way you can. Maybe now, I mean, you're really needing a turnover, if anything else, uh, to be able to get the ball on your own side of the field and have a little better opportunity to be able to score. And last drive, Loris seemed stopped at a couple times. Hope had the momentum, but some great conversions on third down, some penalties from Hope as well have cost them early as England gets ready to go back to work. Tedro in motion. Quezon is the tailback, thrown in the flat to Haynes, and he's got it up around the 40-yard line. Flagler wrestles him out there, second down and medium. Considering looking back on having the opportunity to talk to Coach Barnet, it's like he said, he said, we just got to keep the ball in front of us. You know, they've for the most part been able to limit some of the big plays. Obviously the big touchdown to Brown, last drive. They've done a pretty good job for a younger unit. Here's Quezon again, getting past the first wave of tacklers before he's brought down a yard short of the first down. It will be a third and one. So here's your chance for a stop if you're Hope College. Now, so many options in the playbook for Loris, and we've seen them. They can spread the field, they can run up the middle. We'll see if Quezon, their junior, is the option that they go to right here as they once again go a little bit more power with a two receiver set on third and one from the 44. Anglin, give Quezon, looking for the first, into the pile, he's right around it, we'll see the mark, and I think the mark is going to be about half a yard short. I really expected them to try and bounce it out a little bit there, that was the one part that looked like Hope set up that they were banking on, we're going to be able to stop you up the middle. And Hope has got their stop, the mark a yard short, the Loris punt unit coming out, and a big, big answer from defensive coordinators Pardonay's unit right there. They needed that so desperately. And come up with a third and one stop. That means that much more, I think, too, to meet them in the hole and make that kind of play. Harris will be back to bring this one back for Hope. Nate, I'm surprised by Laura's decision not to try to get that half a yard. I mean, you've been, you've been pushing Hope College around all, all afternoon. Nonetheless, I mean, even on their own side of the ball, they trust their defense already. Tumbler on the way to Harris. He's going the wrong way inside the five-yard line. Making one man miss. Has a block over the 20. Racing to the 30. Harris to the 40. Down the sideline. Here goes Harris to the 30. And he is gone. Terrell Harris is going to house it. And Hope is on the board. <laughs> An unbelievable return. He was going the wrong way inside the five-yard line. He was running along the goal line. And somehow he turns it up and goes 95 plus to the house. And Hope is on the board, 14-6. I'm thinking, where are you going? You're on your own five-yard line at that point. Hey, but it works out. He's coming off to his coach saying, you need a big play. I got it for you. Huge play for the Dutch. Harris was the guy that Coach Sturzman talked about in the preseason is kind of the guy that we're going to have to go to a lot as both a leader on and off the field. And that's making a play on the field that's going to help lead everyone quite a bit. Balkan will look to add the extra point here for the Flying Dutchmen who are on the board and in business. Well, in a hold. And that one will find its way through. So Hope College on the board off an electric return from Terrell Harris. He goes the distance. And Hope is on the board and within one score. Get the ball to your senior. Let him make a play. That's what playmakers are going to do. I mean, look at the Division I level. I mean, I know everybody in the country want to talk about Colorado. And, I mean, that's a team. They just want to get the ball to their playmakers and let them make plays. Hope College say, we're going to do that with our guy. That's Terrell Harris. So now if you're Hope, you get a stop, you get a return like that, and even though you're trailing by a score still, it feels like that momentum has significantly shifted. If this defense gets one more stop, Hope is primed, obviously, in very, very good position to make a charge back. 12.05 remaining in the second quarter. 14-7 now, the Loris Duhawk lead. As Terrell Harris has set this place on fire with that kick return. And now Hope will get ready to send it away one more time. Rocious and Terry Jackson back to bring this one on the return for Loris. Sure 
Balkin will get ready to send it away. School record. Just getting word as well, that is a school record for punt return now in the history of Hope College football for Terrell Harris. So an electric play that is a history and decades old record breaking play over the 30 yard line. Terry Jackson has got it for Loris. Their offense comes out, but Matt just adds that much more to that play for Terrell Harris as he'll cement himself uh, pretty solidly, I think, with that kind of punt return in Hope College football history. Cement yourself in the Hope College football record books with, with that play. Record broken stood over 40 years from wow. 1979. Hey, and this, Ray and, it was not called Ray and Sue Smith Stadium as Coach Ray Smith was on the staff at that point. Yep. So Evan Anglin and company get ready to go back to work. The mark's the 32-yard line. It's now a one-touchdown advantage for the Dewhawks. It's Jamel Britt. He's got it pounding and pushing his way to the 39-yard line. Such a powerful runner. I mean, when you meet a guy at the 35, he gets more, four more yards out of it, taking three Navy shirts with him. It just shows the kind of power he can run with. Nate, Britt is a gamer. I mean, at this level, at this Division three level, he's got power, he's got move, he's got size. He's got speed. And he makes good decisions. England on second and three, looking deep, overthrown. He was trying to get Tedrow, the tight end. That was Caleb Dean, the deepest man back in coverage. And it'll be third down and short once again. Hope got the stop here last time. Let's see if the Flying Dutchman can come up with another one. Expect run, expect run, expect run. Stack it. Send those backers if you need to. Hope changing up the front and crowding in one of those backers. Britt will go in motion. Here's Anglin. He'll drop to pass. Fires. Manny Brown was the intended target. Nick Flagler had the great coverage. Incomplete. Fourth down. Another good stop by the Hope College defense. Got to be encouraged by that stop. Your Hope College. You know, get the pressure that you need. Get a hit on that quarterback. Change things up right now. Hope College with an opportunity to tie this ball game. How about the turnaround on defense? The first two drives for Loris, the way they drove the field, and back-to-back -back three and outs immediately to follow. A great turnaround, and now Terrell Harris right back out on the field getting ready to make something happen. It'll be Kenny to send this one away for Loris. Harris is going to let that one go as that was angled out of bounds immediately. I think Loris wanted nothing to do with Terrell Harris. What do you think there, Matt? Yeah, I think we'll take the lesser of two evils right now with 11 to play here in the second quarter. Like you said, you could feel the momentum shift here at Ray and Sue Smith Stadium. So Hope with a chance to tie on this drive. So we'll get the offense back on the field. We haven't seen the Hope offense in a little bit with the return from Harris, who will be out as the slot man here before their offense got to go out once again. So Zach Trainer and company get ready to go to work. This drive, it'll again be Elijah Smith as the tailback for head coach Peter Sturzma and company. Trainer give to Smith, lowering the head to the 32-yard line. Not much more to go after that. I mean, the running lanes have just not been there on really any sort of drawn-up play up the middle right now for Hope College. And if I'm on Hope College's offensive coaching staff i'm saying a trainer right now we trust you we trust you keep taking that deep ball we know you can make that throw is they're going to need him to be a playmaker today brandon phelps the junior outside linebacker helping make that stop he's been in on a lot of plays you see him crowding it off the outside it's elijah smith again up the middle has a little bit more room he's wrestled past the 40 pushes the pile to the 45 first down hope college again that time he met brandon phelps but that time it was advantage elijah smith he moves the chains for hope Trainer brings Seth Lumen, the freshman, in as the H-back for this play. Back to the three receivers set to three down front for the Dewhawks. Give to Smith. He's got space again over the 50, and he's in the plus territory. So right as we talk about a little bit of lack of running room, back-to-back -back really nice gaps and nice runs from Elijah Smith as he'll get about six on first down. No need to go away from it at the moment. Let's just move in Strickland in there. We can get Harris on the end around. 
you got options now in the run game as Loris just looks looks tired defensively. We said Strickland in there, a little bit bigger of the backs, a junior at 6'2", 225. He's out of Mason High School. And here's Trainer giving to Strickland. Up the middle and charging for the first down and then some inside the 40 to the 39 yard line falling on ahead. A good tough run right there. Owen Kelly the junior making the stop but a first down for a hard charging and hard running hope attack right now. Nothing more discouraging to a defense Nate than when they're just getting four or five yards of carry. You're stacking the box, you're doing what you can and it's so discouraging for a defense. So again, Trainer from the gun with a tailback Strickland. First and 10 from the 39, we tick to 9.15 to go. Strickland right up the middle, lowering the head to around the 36 yard line. As he's able to get three or four on the first down carry. Mark will officially be a gain of two and a second and eight coming up. And the one thing you're seeing a lot with this Hope offense right now, Matt, is a lot of substitutions in terms of the receiver, in terms of the H-back, and in terms of even the running backs. They've been running guys on and off the field all drive long trying to keep everyone fresh. It's this pace of play. I can't wait to see how many plays end up each team offensively at halftime. Strickland again shimmying over the 35 to just shy of the 30. It'll be about a third and two for Hope to try to convert right here. They still trail by a touchdown, but all momentum has completely shifted. Two first half or first quarter touchdowns for Loris put the Dewhawks in good position, but Hope, a couple stops, the big kick return, the record-breaking punt return from Harris, and suddenly they're rolling and they're working quickly. Third and three is the mark from the 32. Sending pressure. Sending, sending, sending pressure here from Loris. You saw that was Phelps that was jumping on the near side a little bit right there and Hope makes the adjustment off of what they saw. Trainer will give to Strickland. He'll lower the shoulder. He's got the first down again. Good, tough run by the big junior right there as Hope just pounding it down the field and moves the chains once more. That's a great pre-snap read there. See if you can catch him off sides on the third and short. When you don't, able to just make a quick adjustment, able to get that first down. Got to put points on the board here. First and 10 from the 28. Trainer from the gun gives to Strickland again, and he's got a good hole off a good cut over the 20, and will be right around the chains. Looks like he will be right on the mark. First down, good run from Strickland, who has been very, very impressive on this drive. Since they brought in the big body junior, he has been charging this offense along this drive. So Hope College into the red zone inside the 20 to the 18 yard line right here. They trail 14-7 and they're on the march. First drive for Hope offensively. We saw the INT, they had the punt return for their score in this one and now Trainer goes back to work. He'll fake to Strickland, pressure's coming. Trainer able to just get that away with a pair of Dewhawks all over him. Jacob Lensmeyer, the junior, the first to find his way in the backfield along with Andrew Hayfold, the senior middle linebacker. He'll be second and 10 right back to the 18. Good decision by Trainer able to get that ball out. See if they're gonna go back to the run game here to get a little bit more of a manageable third down. Trainer will break him out. Castle will be the H-back here. Strickland stays in as the tailback. Harrison in motion. They will give it to Strickland. Good spin over the 10 down to the 8-yard line. Another great run by Strickland. He'll be right up around the line to gain. Looks like he might just be a yard short on the mark, but again, Strickland with great yardage on those inside runs. Great play calling and great execution right now. Strickland, I mean, this is a massive drive for him. He's got a game's worth of yards already just on one drive. This will be a third and one from the nine for Hope. They trail 14-7 as we tick under six and a half to go in our first half of play. Here from Holland, trainer. Give Strickland up the middle, bullying his way down to the four. Another good, tough, hard run. Owen Kelly on the stop, but it takes two or three gold helmets to bring him down each and every time. First and goal. I would say probably just feed number nine a couple more times right here. Three yards in a cloud of dust every time. What a change of events, man. I mean, looking at the second quarter, I was like, man, if 
if the Dewhawks score here 21 nothing, it's getting away from them. Nonetheless, we're in a really different opportunity now. Oh yeah, this game is certainly a much different feeling game than we had just a few moments ago as Trainer will get ready to go to work once again with Strickland. They'll load it up a little bit right here with a pair of H-backs across the line. Here is Strickland, bouncing, diving, touchdown, Flying Dutchman. A dominant drive from Chant Strickland ends in the end zone as it should. Had a touchdown a week ago, adds his second of the year, and Hope can knot it with the extra point. And it's death by a thousand cuts on the other side of the ball field here for Hope College. Just that running game all over Loris as we look at the replay here. Balkan to add the point after. He got it. We're tied at 14. What a turnaround. It was a two score, 14 nothing lead for Loris. They had the football. Hope gets a stop. They get a punt return. They get one more quick stop. They power their way down the football field and they have knotted this game at 14. So quickly, Hope kicking team back onto the field and we'll see Balkan get ready to send this one on away as you cannot overstate the momentum and the general feel of this football game but still an important drive now can Hope keep that momentum going or can this dangerous Loris attack get back to what they showed on the first two drives rather than the second two drives of this contest that they got punched and they punched back and here with five and a half to play in the second like you said, I'm curious what kind of adjustments England and the Loris offense want to make. Be able to give them an opportunity to score seven here. Balkan looking for Jackson. He'll let it go over his head into the end zone. And here comes Loris on the touchback. Five and a half minutes to go, first half. And they've got a chance, Loris does, to try to put points on the board and take it into the locker room with potentially a 21-14 lead but at the same time. Again, it's been back-to-back -back three and outs. I've, I've never seen an offense that looked as good as this one did on the first two drives and then go three and out on the next two. I, I mean, it has been a complete night and day turnaround for these units on this side of the ball. It's just surprised that they went away a little bit from the game plan. You saw early on as they were moving the ball outside the tackles. And Hope College just made the adjustments that they needed to to contain them. So really executing the game plan that they want. All right, here's England on first down. The pressure coming. He's going to tuck it down. Here goes England. He'll scamper over the 30-yard line out of bounds. We haven't seen that much out of him in terms of the running game that he brings to the table. But you see right there, he is so flight of foot. And when you chase him from the pocket, you have to be careful on the contain on the edge because he can burn you quickly and you get seven yards on first down. They'll spread him four wide as Tedro, the tight end, goes to the, the left in the slot. Anglin, he'll look to pass again. He's got Kaysan. Bush wraps him up. First down, though, for the Dewhawks, who are working quickly with 5.08 in the first half. Dewhawks head coach Steve Helminiak getting the call in. And they'll go back to the pistol right here. Kaysan up the middle, nowhere to go. He was met by Brady Howe, the fifth year out of Holland Christian, one of the team captains. He's made so many plays over the years, and he's made so many plays today as well defensively. It'll be a second down and 10 right back where they start at the 36. Anglin, fake give and he'll roll the pass. Anglin, going deep, looking for Brown, unable to haul it in, just a little overthrown on the deep route. They were attacking Flagler out there as the man in coverage, it's third and 10. So a interesting decision to take a shot on second and 10, and now Hope in good position defensively to try to get their third consecutive stop on this drive. And it looked like they were working towards that one as they go back to the run game after starting to open things up. Then they're just taking a shot as they're forcing Hope linebackers to get up to the line of scrimmage. And then when they get that man-to-man, -man, that's the guy. You got Brown, your guy, on man-to-man -man coverage. Let's give that a shot. Anglin's going to go empty here on third and ten. 
and Hope is showing some pressure, and they're bringing the pressure. England flush from the pocket. He's going to run. He breaks the tackle. He's got the first. He's into the open field. Here goes Evan England to the 25. England down to the 20. England on his feet to the 10. And down he goes. A first and goal coming up. Evan England flush from the pocket, looking almost dead to rights. And somehow he turns on the Jets and he puts Loris deep, deep into Hope territory. Man, Nate, that is a special skill set right there. I thought Micah Bush, I thought we got our best linebacker on the rush, on his toes, and then England just takes off. He said, I'm, I'm faster than your whole defense, and he gets it there. Coach Sturzma wants a timeout. 4.06 to go. We're not at 14. We will take a timeout as well. All right, 4.06 to go, and it'll turn to a first and goal from the 10. What a play made by Evan England. And Loris will spread him with three receivers here. England dropping to pass, pressure in his face immediately. And Otis Ackerman, the junior out of East Grand Rapids, slings him down. He's on fire after the play as well. Great job on the rush by Hope College to turn it in a second and go all the way back to the 15-yard line. Huge sack, and to make it hard here on England, they've done a good job of when they're back there getting a hit on him. Make sure they know that they're present. England again will spread him out with four wide receivers this time. Kaysan is the back to his left hip. England snap at the waist and. Rolling left, flush from the pocket again, being chased by Ackerman, looking for the end zone. Jump ball, caught, touchdown! It's Michael Crawford, the red shirt senior, able to corral it through the contact, through the contest, and Loris goes back up a score. What a grab by the red shirt senior. You could see that kind of from a mile away as he's rolling out. You think, is he taking off? And Crawford, just the read, just saying, just throw me a jump ball right here as he puts his hand up and he knows I, I just got to beat this one man, this corner, as I'm taller than him. Good play there by Loris. We got a prize fight here, back mm -hmm. and forth. Both offenses kicking it back in the gear. And the redshirt senior, who is normally the leading option in the attack for uh, this passing game, had 10 receptions a week ago. Getting back into it and getting a TD on the board as well. Talmadge will add the extra point and Loris goes back up seven with 3.16 to go in this second quarter. And again, we'll probably relatively quickly see these uh, special teams units come back onto the field. And now Matt Hope's got 3.16 and they've got to have, they have just enough time, I should say, to try to make something happen. They love the pounding, grinding drive of last time. It'll have to look a little bit different, but still plenty of time to try to do what they want to do. And you're in the middle of this game. You're trying to win a ball game, Nate, but I want to also consider, let's look at this from a 10,000-foot view. you got several freshmen and sophomores starting on your defensive line and your linebacking crew and your corners. And it's a game right now where you think, we're giving them the opportunities right now to play against a really good national team. And, and what can we take away here? You still have an opportunity. You're still in this game. You still have opportunity. But, but for this defense to continue to make adjustments, and these are such good reps for those young players. The very dangerous Brody Thompson is back to return this one, and he will take it. Hope already with a punt return in this game from Harrison. Thompson is dancing to nearly the 25-yard line, but is wrapped up and slung down before he has a chance to advance any further. So here comes Trainer and company, Matt, and this is going to be a big answer with 
the amount of time left, of course, getting the ball to start the second half, a chance for Hope to really turn this into quite something if their terrific, talented freshman quarterback can lead them down the field here with a strike. I think you can see with three minutes to play, you probably don't have time for the full drive with all the rushing you want to do. They've got timeouts, but with only one left, they're going to have to trust Trainer to throw it here. Don't give Loris the ball back with enough time. We'll start with Elijah Smith as the tailback for this drive, and they'll motion Terrell Harris, and they'll give to Terrell Harris. Nice block set up in front. Here goes the speedster to the 35-yard line. He's got the first down. And again, the senior out of Whitehall with now the longest punt return in the history of Hope College football, getting the 35-yard line, and a nice drawn-up play right there off the motion. Trainer to work quickly. This is Elijah Smith. Lowers the head just shy of the 40-yard line as he was upended by Nico Jamilio, the sophomore middle linebacker. Two. Hurry up offense, hurry up offense. Absolutely, they're going quick and they got 2.40 to go here in the second. On a second and six, here's Trainer dropping to pass. He looked long to the left before he slings it to Brody Thompson, who's immediately brought down with a shot. Tackle was on Zacchaeus Knighton, grad student, one of a lot of really experienced players that this Loris Dewhawks uh, team has on both sides of the field. So now third and two. This will be a give to Smith. Up the middle, lowering the head. He's going to be short. Unable to get as he ran in the middle of this defense. Brandon Phelps stands over top of him. And a fourth down and a decision here with two minutes to go for Coach Sturzma. Looks like he's bringing Strickland in. There may not be too much of a decision to make. They got the power unit out. They're going to go for it. I like this decision. It does give Loris the ball if they can't get it, but you've got to think your, your best running back can get one yard. Here we go, Trainer from the tight gun. Give to Strickland, up the middle, he's got it falling ahead to the 49-yard line. Terrific game continues as Strickland gets the yardage he needs and moves it up to near midfield. And that's huge as now, even if you don't get a touchdown, you, you likely aren't giving Loris the ball with an opportunity to score. So let's see what they can do. Trainer clutching. Here comes the pressure. Down he goes. Michael Mixon, the junior on the rush, gets the sack. And now second down and very, very long for Hope College. And Coach Sturzma wants a timeout. 1.23 to go in the half. We will take a timeout as well. And welcome back here to Hope Football, and welcome back to Howland, Michigan. Ray and Sue Smith Stadium. Nate Dreyer, Matt Wainer with you, 123 to go. And Hope backed up second and 17 now from their own 42-yard line, trailing Loris 21-14. Zach Trainer, the freshman, will get ready to go back to work at the controls here of the Flying Dutchman attack. Chance Strickland staying in the backfield alongside him as Coach Sturzman's offense going to spread four wide right here out of the gun. Trainer with the pressure coming. It's picked up. He sidesteps the first man, throwing off the back foot. It's Thompson over the 40. First down, and the Rockford product will take it over the 35-yard line. Love him trusting his athleticism there to get outside of the pocket. Want to see that a little bit more. He's going to comment on that last play. He just hesitated when on the one that he got sacked. Here's he moves up with that pressure as it comes, work through that pocket, step up, make a good throw. And those are the sort of things out of a freshman quarterback new to this system that you're going to see drive by drive a whole bunch of different developments and even play by play a bunch of developments you'll see out of them. Trainer to throw again here on first and ten. The pressure coming. He's going deep and just overthrows the streaking Brody Thompson. They were looking for the freshman again. And it will be second down and ten. A good shot. And again, they've got a man with a step just unable to hit him on the deep shot. Yeah, it's definitely the right decision is he sensed the pressure from the get-go, and he knew he had to get rid of that ball. 
I mean, if you're from this area and you've seen Brody Thompson at Rockford the last couple years and what that offense looked like, and they like to throw the rock around quite a bit, he was one of the very, very key pieces spreading the football down the field on looks just like that one as Trainer will go back to work. Second and 10 from the 34. They motion Strickland and go empty backfield. Here's Trainer to pass. Trainer looking deep, looking for the end zone again. It's overthrown. Harris, the intended target down the field. Mixon on the coverage. Third and 10 with 107 in the half. Like you said, with Thompson and Trainer, what a gift for Hope College football fans. It's two freshmen mm -hmm. playing a lot of snaps this year, of course. And we get to get four years of these guys playing at a high level. And you already see a little bit of that burgeoning connection. They've connected once already. They've looked for each other for a couple of times. And Hope will go to work. Third and 10 from the 34. They trail by a touchdown here to Loris. And the home opener for the Flying Dutchman. Trainer stepping up again, evading the pressure, looking deep, all alone. Terrell Harris, touchdown, Hope. That's the one you need by Trainer. You can miss on the deep ball a few times, but hey, when it mattered, he made that play. What a grab by Terrell Harris as he's able to range in the open field. Let's take a look at the replay. Like you said, Trainer steps up. And all alone, Terrell Harris on the grab. What a day he has. The now record-owning longest punt return in the history of Hope College football. And he adds the reception for the TD right there. And a penalty marker is going to fly on the made extra point. We'll have our second running into the kicker penalty. This time it's going to go the other way. You can see Trainer maturing in real time, Nate. You see on plays before where he's hesitating in the pocket, allowing that pressure to come. There he senses the pressure, moves up in front of the pocket. That's great athleticism by him. And Terrell Harris, wide open. That's two massive plays by the senior. Oh, yeah. I mean, you're, you're starting to see how dangerous this Hope attack has the opportunity to be this season between... Again, we've mentioned the ceiling of Zach Trainer with the size, with the arm he has, with some of the athleticism and his ability to move in the pocket. He, he was a pro-style quarterback prospect, a three-star of Wald Lake Western, but he can move well, and he moves well in the pocket. We saw it, that all drive long, like you said. The maturity, stepping up in the pocket, delivering the confident throws down the football field, and hope is in business again as they've knotted it at 21 with just less than a minute to go. And now we will see the Dewhawks with a chance to get this dangerous attack that we know can fly down the field on one last time before the halftime break. If you're Hope College and you can make your way to halftime tied at 21, you got to feel really good about the work you did in the first half. Jackson will let it go. They'll start at the 25. 58 seconds to go. So if you're defensive coordinator Jacob Pardonay and this defense, how are you playing this drive? Because I think you see teams a lot of times get way too conservative, backing off in coverage, but also you don't want to be sending six, seven guys on the blitz and putting yourself in position for some of these dangerous deep shots to beat you. Yeah, you can't play a total prevent. I think they're going to have probably cover twos on the corners because you want to consider that he's going to want to run it as well because he's probably going to want to take off so you just limit you got to keep everything five to ten yards and just limit that big play with with less than 20 seconds to go it was the legs of england that delivered almost all of the yardage on the last drive for loris and he's lobbing for brown nearly intercepted by caleb dean the sophomore out of Jenison on the overthrown ball nearly came up with a spectacular INT. It remains second and 10, though, after that attempt to go to the outside. How about the trust with Brown throwing in the double coverage on a jump ball for him? He's got the height, but man, what that's an ill-advised throw in your own territory. Yeah, clock stops at 53 seconds to go. And again, they'll spread it. England with Britt as the tailback. They give it to Britt, and he has got nowhere to go. A wave of Hope College tacklers engulf him. Ackerman was the first to make contact. It'll be third down, 41 seconds on the clock. Loris electing not to call timeout. I think they're just going to run the clock out here. That appears to halftime. That does appear to be 
what they're thinking as we'll go under 24 seconds and less here. Not at 21. And England looks to the sideline. What a first half of play this one certainly was in terms of runs and back and forth. And the second half looks anything like the first. Who knows what may, we may be going for. They're going to run a play here with 10 seconds to go. It's going to be to Britt up the middle. And he'll cut his way past the 30 with a big hit. Leveled on him to the 31-yard line. And that will send both teams to their locker room. All right, Matt, I don't even know where to begin <laughs> with this first half of play. Again, just to recap, first drive of the game, Loris easily drives down the field. Hope then turns it over on the INT. Loris drives and scores again, 14-0 at that point in time. It seems like it is all for the taking for Loris. It was. They have the football back again, already up two scores. Hope gets a stop. They get a punt return, and the rest is history. We have a little bit more back and forth scoring at the end, but again, I'm going to let you choose where to begin because I don't know where to begin. I, I got to tell you, I'm, I'm shocked. Down 14-0, I, I thought we were heading towards a rowdy, and you looked at Loris just looks so in charge, so in command, and that's what one big play can do for your team, completely galvanize this team to be able to have an opportunity to score there by Terrell Harris. Obviously, that longest punt or kick return, I'm sorry, be able to break the record and now be in the Hope College record books. But, Nate, it's to consider the adjustments that the defensive side of the ball with, with Coach Pardonet were able to make. That's the key to me because offensively, they're just running it. Mm -hmm. They're just going to keep running it, and I think that's the game plan in the second half. Trainer able to step up, make that big touchdown throw to Harris as well. But, hey, I mean, I like what Hope College is doing offensively. Now I think – I, I think uh, Loris is going to come out with a few tricks up their sleeves with England. I completely tend to agree. And as we go into this halftime break, Hope Athletics wants to give a big thank you to our anchor partners this fall, LVZ Financial Planning, the Lighthouse Title Group, the Holland Board of Public Works, and Mimic Insurance. We are grateful for their support of Hope Athletics as we pursue academic success, competitive excellence, and transformational experiences. Also, the Orange and Blue Fund supports Hope, the Hope Athletics mission to provide academic success, competitive excellence, and transformational experiences to our student, student athletes. You can support our mission by making a gift to the Orange and Blue Fund. Learn more at athletics.hope.edu slash orange and blue blue all right 21 all at the break they're going to honor some of the hope college sports teams right now during this halftime break a heck of a first half we're gonna be right back in a few minutes because we have got an incredible final 230 minutes or final 30 minutes coming up in this one 21 21 at the break hope tied with loris at nationals since 2007 congratulations to our women's swimming and dive team Women's track and field swept MIAA indoor and outdoor titles for the third time in program history last school year, matching the feats of the 2022 and 2018 teams, led by head coach Kevin Cole and 17 all MIAA performers combined over both sports, included most valuable indoor and outdoor track athlete Anna Tucker. The Flying Dutch won the indoor title by 38 points and the outdoor title by 74 points. Hope went on to finish 11th in the National Division III Program of the Year standings. Our congratulations again to our women's track and field team. Women's lacrosse made history last spring by earning the first MIAA title and making the first NCAA Division III Championships appearance in the program's history. Led by head coach Keegan Pontius and five all MIAA performers, including most valuable defensive athlete Delaney Pontius, De, excuse me, Delaney Kovalviak. The Flying Dutch went undefeated in MIAA regular season games and defeated Calvin and St. Mary's to win the league tournament. Hope finished with a 12 and 6 record, the most wins in our program's history. Congratulations to women's lacrosse. Final team to be recognized, our women's basketball program continued its excellence in the MIAA, winning a share of a third consecutive league championship 
with a 14-2 league record. Led by head coach Brian Morehouse and all MIAA performers Claire Bagley and Savannah Feenstra, the Flying Dutch went on to win the MIAA tournament for the 17th time in program history and advanced to the second round of the NCAA championships, finishing with a 26 and three overall record. Again, congratulations to our women's basketball team and these four championship women's programs. As we now welcome the remaining Hope College student athletes to the field, please turn your attention once again to the video board to view the 2022-23 Hope Athletics highlight video. My name is Megan Bigelow, and during my time there, I was on the Hope Women's Soccer Team. I decided to choose Hope because of the opportunity to be involved in multiple things. I didn't want to go somewhere where I was just a number in the field. I was able to double major, experience both a business academic load as well as economics. I love the opportunity to really get to know my professors. Hope exceeded my expectations. I'm Nate Bauman. As an invested community partner, we're proud to help share Hope's stories of transformational impact. 
it's no secret. The best way to learn about Hope College is to spend time on our campus. The Hope Admissions team invites you to a personalized visit experience you won't forget. Located in downtown Holland, Michigan, our historic campus is close to shopping and dining and just 10 minutes from Lake Michigan. We invite you to check out our campus tour options or sign up for an online tour with the Hope Admissions Office. There's never been a better time to see Hope College. Visit us at hope.edu slash admissions. In our popular mythology, revolutions happen in Silicon Valley, right? But no, 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 the revolution happened here. I think we are starting a revolution. It's coming from a very strong sense of who we are. It's immediately creating a multi-generational community. There's something magical happens when you shift from being a payer to being a giver. Hope Forward has 58 students, I think, today-ish. You know, when we started in 94, we had 47. It's doable. What they're trying to do is doable. Getting people to believe early on is the hardest part. It has given people a sense of belonging to a cause greater than themselves. This can happen. This is possible. And we need each of you to be brand ambassadors for this initiative. We're all aware of the crisis in American education. There are other crises as well that I think are linked to it. The second is the crisis facing our young people, the mental health crisis. And the third crisis is the crisis in our church. And when I look at what is happening here at this school, in this community, I see it as not just addressing the first of those crises, but all three of them. The students are incredible, and the idea is incredible. Why not 30 years from now, this is the norm? I've said this a million times, but who better than a place called hope to run toward things that to the world look hopeless? Yeah, my name is Travis Williams. I'm the CEO of the ODC Network. I graduated from Hope in 1998. I studied biology, and then I also played football. In order to be successful, people really need more than just the academic experience, but they need people to come alongside them and help them coach them, mentor them. I find that Hope College has just been one of the best examples of being able to do that anywhere. As an invested community partner, LVZ is proud to help share Hope's stories of transformational impact. Welcome to the 2023 Catalyst Summit. This is Malcolm Gladwell. Thank you. And when I look at what is happening here at this school, in this community, it's actually far more of a revolution than you may give yourself credit for. What's going to differentiate you in the fullness of time is the content of your character and the courage you have to bring to the situation. The obstacle was getting people to believe that change was possible. If one person invests time, energy, and resources in the trajectory of another person, it change their life forever. And in getting to know them individually in a group, they have brightened my heart and spirit as to the future of young people at Hope College. It's like the biggest investment and trust a college can give to a student. And when a 17 or 18 year old is invested by that much, I feel like it changes your daily life. The work in this exhibit represents the lived experiences and future impact of 58 incredible people. Very late night. Yeah, very late, yeah, very late night at 7 o'clock. Yes, that's right. Something about 
being on the receiving end of being told you are worthy, this is a pure gratuity, and and all we are asking is that you consider what it is to respond to this kind of grace later in life to future generations. And I was like, what this really is, is like, it's immediately creating a multi-generational community. College is priceless, but it's way too expensive. I think the crazy thing is that no one is really doing anything to really solve that puzzle. It is one of those wonderful ideas that people are gonna try and politicize it, but it's non-politicizable. Why not 30 years from now, this is the norm. I applied to the Hope Forward program mainly like on a whim, but what really made me interested in it and like what interested my whole family in it. It's generosity based and that is not something that you will ever find in higher ed. A scholarship is more like, I see you've earned this, you did academics well, you're really good at sports, like I'm just gonna give you this money and you'll lose it if you don't meet a certain criteria. And the hope forward gift is saying, we're gonna give it to you with the expectation that you're gonna turn around and be generous to the next generation. Such a big beauty and especially to me about hope forward is it's so gospel centered. Like, I think that's the same with, with our walk with Jesus, is there's a sense of we are given to give. It allows me to focus a lot more and really listen to what God wants me to do. I get to jump into nursing, hopefully debt-free because of Hope Forward. If I hadn't received such a, a wonderful gift of this tuition, I would have to be a lot more tuition focused. Whereas I've given, been given this gift of focusing on the people around me, the experiences around me, and getting to dive deeper into the things in the here and now instead of the how am I going to pay for this later. I'm going into physical therapy, so that means three more years of grad school after, <laughs> after Hope, um, but it's expensive. I was considering the military to pay for undergrad and then obviously graduate school because there's just, there was no way I could have done it. I look at every class as it being a gift because someone is paying for my tuition, so that's all the classes that I'm attending. I focus on what's happening in that class and the gift that I'm given to learn these things. It serves as a very reminder of what the gospel is so true about in that uh, we give because we have received first, and I think that has changed my outlook on people, it has changed my outlook on college, it's not just taking, um, but it also I think has changed my outlook on uh, who I serve and, and being outward focused. I didn't have to um, choose another career that would pay me more and that wouldn't make me as happy into going as, into social work. At first, I was just trying to be part of a soccer team, and that was pretty much it. But by being involved in Hope Forward, it allowed me to think, I got into the team, and what's next? Like, how can I give back to this community? I really like the cohort experience. We always say this, and like, I truly believe this. We are one of the most diverse group of students here on campus. We are definitely very different, and, I, and that's, that's really cool to see. Just the community of Hope Forward and the people that are in it, a small group of people that are all very interested in making a huge difference in the world and to have those people to go out into the world with. It's, it's crazy to think and I would have never thought that I would be sitting in freshman year thinking, oh well I can't wait to give back to such a program. And I think that is so true to, to the heart of Hope Forward is we don't give because we have to. I think we give because we want to and we give because we've been given. I really want to be able to help support college students. It doesn't feel like a burden in any kind of way. I'm excited about it and show them that generosity that has been shown to me. Um, I want them to go to college debt free. So I'll get to jump into into my career and just continue to provide for the Hope Forward program to help other students do the same thing. I think it's just like living in a generosity mindset, right? A lifestyle of generosity. Because Hope Forward has been such a part of my hope journey, I've learned like I can be generous with my time. I can be generous with my financial resources. I can be generous with just listening. Like it changes the way you live your life. You can be yourself and that's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, a, it's a mindset shift.
Hope College will receive the second half kickoff. All right, Nate Dreyer, Matt Wainer rejoining you. Welcome back to Holland and Smith Stadium. And a thriller, Loris Hope tied at 21 in a back and forth affair. And we're ready to rock and roll the second half. It will be the Flying Dutchman getting ready to bring it back and get their offense on the field. Brody Thompson, the electric freshman out of Rockford, has got it at the 30, and he gets twisted down by Owen Kelly. All right, Matt, here comes Zach Trainer and company. Big second half, big momentum shifting drive. If Hope can run the ball down the field the way they did a drive ago uh, when they scored their third touchdown of the game, they could really, really be in business. Well, college's coaches got to be able to say to Trainer, dude, you're doing what we need you to do. Stay in this ball game, keep being confident, move up inside that pocket. Be able to make good throws. Hey, we got ourselves an exciting second half here, Nate. Absolutely, and they will open with a split back shotgun formation. A little bit different look than we've seen. Here's Terrell Harris. He has had one unbelievable game, and he's out in space over the 40 again. If you're just tuning in, Terrell Harris now is in Hope College record book history with the longest punt return in the history of the program. He also had a TD grab at the end of the first half, so the senior out of Whitehall has been absolutely electric for the Flying Dutchman. Too fast for you on the outside, baby. He just said, give me the ball, let me get to the outside, I do what I want to do. Trainer will break him out, out of the gun right here. Castle is the H-back and they move him across the line. Trainer, give to Elijah Smith and he's got it over the 45 yard line. We've seen Smith and Strickland uh, balancing out the running game. We've seen both of them, of course, Smith a little bit more of the speed guy, a little bit smaller, but Strickland in particular, the power run game has been very, very impressive in the first two quarters of play. Shout out that offensive line, Martian Company again, Nate. Just able to make massive holes for Strickland and Smith all day long. Yeah, Martian, uh, you look at Weber on the right side, the two tackles just absolutely anchor things with a ton of size. Here's Smith lowering the head, breaking into the open field. Elijah Smith at the 20, and he is gone. Hope goes on top. 47 yards and a house call for Elijah Smith. And the Flying Dutchmen have taken the advantage. That's how you respond after halftime, Nate. What a run by the senior out of Hastings, bursting into the open field. Look on that replay there. Nate, them able to open up that outside, and he just bounces it out, able to find open space. Wonderful run by Smith, and a wonderful job by the offensive line, opening up that hole. Hope College with their first lead of this ball game, baby. Balkan adds the extra point, 28-21, Hope College. A game that started 14-0 for the Dewhawks. They had the ball. It seemed like all the momentum in the world was on the side of the team out of Dubuque, Iowa, but it's Hope College and their home opener that have certainly turned things around in a big fashion with a ton of explosive plays, and Elijah Smith answers in the way he can. We talk about how well Strickland's run the power run game. That's why you keep pounding it with Smith because if you break it in the open field, this is the kind of thing he can do. Acceleration all the way to the house as he's able to go nearly half the field in one carry. All the local Holland townies are out for this ball game. 
Wonderful showing for the first home game here in Holland, Michigan. Some of the best weather we'll see here in September, like I said earlier. Come October, November, it'll be much colder. Maybe a, a few less people out here at Ray and Sue Smith Stadium. Balkan will get ready to send it away to Brocious and Willis right here. This will be Willis over his head into the end zone. A touchback. And here comes the Duhawk attack. And this is an attack that we have seen some up and down offensive drives out of. When they have been right, we have seen them led by their terrific junior quarterback, Evan England, absolutely maul their way down the football field. They've shown it with a balanced attack, and they've done it with a lot of different weapons, Matt. Yeah, I expect England to want to open things up a little bit. They were able to get in the backfield a little bit there in the first half. It's played a lot of snaps. Both these offensive teams played a ton of snaps so far today. I think they're really going to try to open stuff up on the, on the outside here. They go three wide receivers. Johnny Quezon will open as the tailback. They've used a trio of backs in this one, and Quezon with a nice cut will be able to get a little bit of positive yardage out of this one after he seemed bottlenecked in the backfield. You see right as part of the tackling pile, Brady Howell, the fifth year, has been all over the place for Hope defensively. Micah Bush also in the middle of things. The sophomore linebacker has been terrific for this defense. And you know, a defense that's a little nicked up and a little inexperienced. A lot of guys have really risen to the occasion down the stretch. Working quickly as this offense likes to do. England will give to Quezon and he's wrapped up by Otis Ackerman, third and long. Ackerman bullied his way through that offensive line, demanded his will to be known as he gets in the backfield. Massive loss. So hope they already have their first lead of the contest. And now, as we'll see right here, like you said, Ackerman off the edge, shedding one man, and nowhere for Quezon to go. He had a sack earlier, and now a big tackle for loss in a third and ten as they will go tight out of the gun right here. Anglins. Pressure coming, dumped it off to Quezon. He's just short. Micah Bush wrestles him down, shy of the first down marker by a yard. And it looks like the punt unit may be coming out right here. They are for Loris, so Hope College's defense. Big run from Smith for the TD. The defense answers immediately, and Hope with a big chance to turn this into a two-score advantage. Huge stop there by Hope College, changing the momentum of the game. Nate, let's take the opportunity to thank the Hope College production team. Done a wonderful job today hitting those replays for us. This is their first game as well, and they've done an awesome job, so we want to thank them. Absolutely terrific staff to get to work with as Kinney sends this one on away. Harris let it go, and here comes Trainer and company again. Hope College, an effective drive the first time down the field. It's just shy of 12 minutes to go. Only three minutes gone in this quarter, but things have changed even more. So Hope with their first lead, and now the football back looking to make a little bit more noise here for Coach Sturzman's squad. I, I've got to be honest with you. I'm not sure what other adjustments really Loris needs to be <laughs> able to make when you have this run game that's got a lot of prowess. Strickland and Smith both just doing whatever they want so far. This is the big junior Chase Strickland and he is bodied right away with nowhere to go. Milo Collier meets him in the hole. It'll be second down and let's make it a long nine after a gain of about a yard right here. <laughs> and you got to think trainer maybe with all these run all these run plays he might be foaming at the mouth for a deep ball here coming up. They've shown a propensity to take a couple shots already. They connected with Harris on the one, and they'll go to the three receiver step from the gun, and they will throw it. On the screen, this is Terrell Harris. Good move. Hit hard from behind. He's down shy of the 40. They try to get Harris in some space right there. Well defended by the Duhawk defense. It'll be third down and medium coming up here for the Flying Dutchman. Make it third and five with 11 minutes to go in this third frame. What do you think, they go run or they go pass here? I mean, it seems like with the way that Strickland's been able to fall forward all game long, you can almost trust five out of them. We'll see what Coach Sturzma will come out with right here. Three receivers set from the gun. Trainer barking out some signals before the snap, and here goes the freshman. He'll drop to pass. Trainer looking for Thompson. He's got it. The freshman's got the first down, and he's over the 50 and in enemy territory. Wrestled out of bounds by Josh Rydberg, who... Had the interception earlier in this game, but a little bit quiet out of the grad student as 
he hasn't necessarily been targeted a ton right there the past game, and the freshman Thompson moves the chains. That's a mature decision there by an 18-year-old freshman. Able to find him on that slant, just on the flat on the outside, able to get him the ball. Trust a freshman receiver there on third and five. Wonderful play by Trainer. Harris will go in motion. They will give it to Strickland. And he's got it over the 40, just shy of that 35-yard line. See Rydberg along with a few others. Andrew Hayful in the middle of the defense to make that stop. But again, Chance Strickland, the junior, they are so comfortable pounding the ball with him time and time again up the middle. Zach Trainer with that unique number zero that we see nowadays finding its way into college football. I don't see on a quarterback too often, but he'll get ready to go to work because we've got an official timeout right now getting something set. And as they have this discussion, Matt, we'll, I mean, we'll look at it more. You look at this hope attack. It's, there's nothing better, I think, as an offensive play caller than when things are working this well in the run game because, boy, it simplifies your life and your decision-making and what you have to try to draw up. Got to think Sturzma and Hawk and really want to take that pressure off of Trainer. So when you're able to have a, a run game like you do, it allows him to kind of relax a little bit, have some breathing room. Give to Strickland this time. He's bottled up in the backfield. It was Brandon Phelps, the late linebacker, joining to help make that collision. And now third down will be faced by the Hope College offense once again. There is a Dewhawk down on the field in a little bit of pain, and that is Andrew Hayful, their big-time leader in the middle of the defense, the senior. Looks like Hayful to a knee is going to be able to pretty quickly get back up to uh, his feet right here. Nate, you mentioned that number zero by a quarterback. I'm going through my memory, memory brain. Can you think of an NFL player that rocked number zero? Well, they, in the NFL, they just <laughs> said you can't. I'm trying to think of early 2000s guys. That's why I'm going back in my memory bank, trying to remember somebody. Or even double zero. Double zero goes even harder. Oh, Zach Trainer in the number zero. We know he wears that minimum, and he's ready to rock and roll. He'll go trips out to the left on third and five right here from the 37. Trainer will give to Chance Strickland. He'll fall ahead for another first down, a hard charging run. And again, if it's that easy on third and five to make the play call to Strickland, just keep doing it. Yeah, that's pretty easy. They know where the ball's going. This is like Frank Gore, 2010. <laughs> I mean, they're just giving him the ball, giving him the rock, saying everybody knows who the ball's going to. Don't matter. I can get five, six yards. Strickland, such a big tailback, 6'2", 225 pounds. He'll get it again right here, able to get away from the first wave of the defenders inside the 25 for a gain of eight yards. Strickland running it down the throats of the Dewhawk defense right now, and the juniors making it happen for this offense. Again, like we've seen all game long, the receiving unit getting changed out quite a bit. You see Travis Myers, the sophomore, wearing 15 in Navy, making uh, one of his first appearances of this half out there wide along with Harris and Holzer right now. Trainer fakes to Strickland. The freshman with time, looking for Holzer. Caught, touchdown, Hope. Wow, another awesome throw there by Trainer. He's got a little bit of time in the pocket, able to step up as we check the replay right here. So much time. Fire up and Holzer. Just beat that DB by a step. We step up in the pocket, make a nice throw there. First TD grab of the year for the senior out of Okemos, Holzer. Like you said, run the ball, run the ball, run the ball. Run that play action and as much time as you could possibly hope for. Trainer had time to eat lunch and then still fire it to a <laughs> wide open man in the end zone. A two score lead for the Flying Dutchman who are all over it in this second half. 8.04 to go in the third. 35-21 hope. That's exactly what you want from your freshman. When you think about I'm able to give you an opportunity to step up, make nice throws. We're going to pound it on the ground. This offensive line doing terrific job. Can't say enough about that unit as a whole. 
Now let's see if Pardonnay in this defense can keep England right in front of them. So again, Brocious and Willis will go back and get ready for the return. Willis has worn 11 at points throughout this year, listed as uh, one today. And he, he is in as part of the return team along with the youngster Brocious. Is hope with their fresh two score lead. Get ready to send this one away with Balkan. They send it in the direction of Willis. He'll let it bounce and he'll let it angle into the end zone. That was a bit of a risky proposition with the bounce that one could have possibly taken to the sideline, but it'll be another 25-yard starting point. And like you said, keeping Evan England in front of you, keeping some of these dangerous men downfield in front of you also becomes critical for Coach Pardonnay on the defensive side of the field. I see Loris a little bit trying to go back to Brown. They had some success earlier. So he's got a little bit of a mismatch height-wise. I think England particularly is just not getting the time he's expecting. He's gotten hit a few times back there, and that's a credit to this Hope defensive line and Isaiah Hicks getting the pressure. Yeah, Brown at 6'2". You see Flagler, Dean, 5'10", 5'11", out there against him. This is a run to the power back, Britt. He broke off the first tackle, and then Brad Rairdon shut him down at the 29-yard line. Off a carry of four yards for Britt, and again, Britt, the junior, the power back at 220 pounds. We've seen Johnny Quezon as well, more of the speed back of the scat back. Kilon Pritchett has factored in a little bit as well to this running attack for the Dewhawks. England will motion Manny Brown here. England stepping up, and he'll take it. England's. Got the first down, angling out of bounds. Micah Bush cut him off. We talked about it. That is the exact sort of play that the terrific junior has the ability to make with his legs that makes things happen. Credit to Anglin, but a shout out there to Isaiah Hicks. I mean, that's such a good first step. For him to be able to get that kind of push off the line, push his offensive lineman back, have an opportunity to tackle Anglin, but still, Anglin's so quick with his legs. Anglin, the junior out of Wheaton, Illinois, will work from the pistol. Jamil Britt, who's out of Chicago, will stay with him. Angland will give to Britt. First to speed. He's got about three on first down into the middle of the pile right there. We'll tick under six and a half minutes to go by the time this next one's snapped in the third quarter. Hope. A terrific start to the third. They are up 14-0 this quarter, and they have a 14-point advantage. England working quickly again as this offense has done all game long. He'll give to Britt. Hesitates and breaks it out. Jamil Britt's got the first down. He's got the 50-yard line out of bounds. Nice run there by Britt. And you've got to give a credit to Hope College. They're really adjusting well to this hurry-up offense. And First couple drives that was just putting them out of sorts. They didn't know where they were running. They just looked set up and able to plan a little bit more. Here comes Britt. Britt spinning into the open field just shy of the 40-yard line right there. You see ranging in from safety, Brad Rarden able to help make the stop right there. The big 6'3", 210 freshman out of Hudsonville. 5.48 and less to go in the third. Second and three for the Dewhawks. See what England wants to cook up here. He's got guys on the left side, ooh, on the field side, looking for it. He's got Manny Brown. He's got the first down. As he looks over the middle, Flagler was on the coverage and the stop. You said it a little bit earlier. Start looking for Manny Brown. He's got the size advantage. He's got the first down advantage. England with Kaysan back in the backfield with 520 in the third throws in the flat it's Haynes over the 30 yard line and he'll spin it ahead over the 25 just shy of the first down attacking the boundary right now you see Dean and Howe in the area around the tackle defense just trying to make that play in from death by a thousand cuts this drive so they can keep it in front of them have an opportunity for a big third down stop second and four with a four wide receiver set right here 
Willis goes across in motion. Here is Quezon, wrapped up in the backfield from all directions, nowhere to go. That's Ackerman again, man. What a game he has had. Terrific job by Ackerman getting in the backfield. Now they got third and long. Opportunity for Hope College here, like I said. Because I'm not even sure if this is, this is field goal range. It would definitely be quite the test for the sophomore Scott Talmadge's leg from out here. And already a 14-point game as well as we are within four and a half minutes to go in the, in the third of our four frames here. Contain, contain, contain. Anglin down to the four receiver set. He'll straight drop to pass. Anglin looking deep. He's looking for Manny Brown. Caught touchdown, Loris. An answer to Brown. They've stretched the field to him a couple times. He's got that one. And Loris back within a score. Exactly what Evan England wanted, Nate. Mm -hmm. He's got the one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside with Manny. College sending those backers on the inside. That's a good risk. I like the risk that Hope takes. But, hey, you got that one-on-one -on -one with your favorite receiver on the outside. Throw a jump ball. Talmadge will look to tack on one more right here. Get us to a seven-point lead or seven-point game. So, sophomore able to get that one in the duel of sophomore kickers who have been perfect on the extra points in this one. 4-10 to go in the third, 35-28. And now we're starting to feel out what's a little bit more of that offensive game. And we'll take a look at this as well in replay. A little bit of the shoulder fake. And then Brown, the separation, the size perfectly placed ball as well. I love the way Brown's able to just kind of give half a step on the inside. Defensive back looking for the post route. Instead, he works to the fade. Knows his quarterback going to put it right on him. We got a ball game here, Nate. We do have a ball game for certain. And Did not check the over-under before the game. I think we've already cleared the over here. I think so, and I think we aren't even close to uh, what our final total is going to wind up <laughs> being in this one, the way these two offenses are starting to go back and forth once again. Thompson is back to return this one. Talmadge will send it away for the Dewhawks. Back underway, one score lead for the Flying Dutchman. And Thompson will get it at the 10. Here comes the freshman, cutting up to the 30 yard line and breaking to the 40. Great return by the terrific freshman out of Rockford. He's got it up to near midfield on the return. He's fast and he's impacting this game so far. See a couple of big third down catches by Thompson. The impact on the kick return team. Guy, like we said, excited to see the connection between him and Trainer over the next four years here at Hope College. And, you know, like I said, they've, they've looked to each other for a couple times. There was even one missed deep ball to Thompson early in this game. Something to continue to watch. The base receivers of Thompson, Holzer, and Terrace will be out there, and it's the speed back Elijah Smith returning to the backfield along with Trainer. Harris will motion to the backfield. He'll take it. It's blown up. Perfectly read by Sean Doyle, the grad student defensive end, and a big loss on first down. Wow, huge defensive play there by Loris. Doyle, 6'1", 230 pounds. He had a sack. He had two tackles for loss a week ago. And a very, very smart, like I said, a grad student, a fifth-year player here for Loris. Certainly knows what he's doing coming off the edge. And it'll be Smith to run this time over right guard, shoving his way past the 40-yard line. Got a couple back right there, but they still are going to have a third and 11 or third and 12, make it third and 11 on the mark to the 41. So your options in the playbook right here, Matt, are shrunk quite a bit, needing to try to pick up this kind of yardage because leading by a score, three minutes to go in the third, you're also not into four-down territory whatsoever. Expect the pressure again from the linebackers on the inside. Expect stunting by the defensive. Yeah, they're showing all that pressure. Trainer's got to step up and make a quick decision. Terrace across, Harris across the line in motion. Trainer stepping up to beat the pressure. Going downfield. Ooh, Holtzer takes a huge collision. Unable to hang on to that one. Rydberg leveling him in coverage. Fourth and 11. And let him right into that defensive back. 
Love the way that he moves up in pressure, be able to try and make that throw. Just led him just a little too far into the defensive backs. Once again, dual punters of Flagler and Dean will be back to send this one away. It is Brocious backing to his 25-yard line on the return. 2.42 in the third, a one-score hope lead. This will be Caleb Dean, sophomore out of Jenison, sends it away to Brocious, who's going to let it go. Takes a great hope bounce inside the 15, close to the 10-yard line, and that'll back up the Dewhawks in a big way to start this drive. So Hope defense will find their way back on the field. They had a very good start to the second half and leading the way with a very good start to the second half despite that last score is Oder Sackerman. Talked about on the last drive, but he has been causing some absolute havoc in the pass and the run game coming off the edge. And with it being a game of runs, Nate, you got to think it starts with the Loris run, then it's the Hope run, then it's Loris, then it's Hope. I think it's about time that Loris ties up this ball game. We'll see what they do here and what England's plan is. England throws out. He's got his red shirt senior and his favorite target, Michael Crawford, over the 25-yard line sent out by Flagler. And there's nothing quite like having that security blanket of a red shirt senior that just hauls everything in the way that Crawford does for England. Kwan Pritchett is the back to start. This drive, he's a 5'11 junior, got quite a bit of run last week in their tight win over Benedictine. Englund, straight drop to pass here. Pressure coming. He's being chased and flushed. That's Parlberg hot on his heels. Let's it go. Manny Brown was the intended target. Out of bounds as Brown goes nearly running into the stands. It'll be second down and 10. And that's a unique ability by England to get outside of pressure there. He thought of for sure sack in most situations. Gives himself an opportunity to try and hit Brown downfield just a bit in the out-of-bounds line. Angle in the offense, get ready to go back to work again. Pritchett, the tailback, Tedro, the tight end, motioned out to the left side right now. And the near side receiver, Michael Crawford, who we just saw make that last grab and had the TD grab a moment ago, or a few moments ago. Give to Pritchett, lowering the shoulder over the 25-yard line, and getting tackled and sent back to the way. Micah Bush and company in the middle. Shut him down. It'll be third and eight. This is a huge play for both teams right here. And I'm curious, if England, where they want to put that. If they're going to go... Something just being able to get England on the outside, give him an opportunity to run it. They go three receivers on third and eight. England will drop to pass. Firing deep. He's looking for Brown. Flagler had the coverage. Incomplete. Fourth down. Loris looking for the flag there on the coverage by Flagler. Look clean. Refs call it clean. And a massive stop for Hope College. And Coach Helmeniak was arguing his case right there and you know a big job by the way for Nick Flagler today with some injuries in the secondary he's been forced to move out more to a corner position rather than the safety we normally see him at and he's done a really really solid job in coverage downfield we've seen that a few times Terrell Harris will get ready to bring this one on back Jarrett Kinney will send it away he stands at around his own 12 yard line to do the punting Harris Going to let the short kick go up around the 45-44 yard line. Here comes the Hope offense. So the Hope defense, Matt, with a big answer that they needed. And now the offense can try to stretch it back to a two-score lead with just a tick under one minute to go in the third quarter. It's been a whole lot of Strickland today. A whole lot of Strickland, a whole lot of Smith. Don't expect Hope College to go outside of that game plan. It's been a recipe for success, but you can kind of scaffold your success here throughout the season if your Hope College's offense say, how much more can we hand the keys to Trainer as we continue to have his trust in this offense? But right now, it's a lot of Strickland and a lot of Smith. They will start with Strickland, and he's got a great hole, and he's spinning to nearly the 40-yard line. Chance Strickland, the ball came out after he went down, moving the chains in a big way right away, 50 seconds and less in the third quarter.
Long look to the sideline from Trainer and company here. We'll be under 30 seconds by the time they snap it. All three receivers go right with the ball on the far hash mark. Strickland on another run. Over the 40, twisted down to the 39-yard line by Andrew Hafel, the senior linebacker on the stop right there. We'll see if Hope tries to get one more playoff or not here before the end of the third quarter. We'll tick under 10 seconds. Looks like they are going to be willing to take it into the fourth quarter. Final five seconds go off the clock. 35-28, Hope leading Loris with one quarter to go. We're going to step aside and be right back. It's no secret. The best way to learn about Hope College is to spend time on our campus. The Hope Admissions team invites you to a personalized visit experience you won't forget. Located in De close to shopping and dining and just 10 minutes from Lake Michigan. We invite you to check out our campus tour options or sign up for an online tour with the Hope Admissions office. There's never been a better time to see Hope College. Visit us at hope.edu. All right, welcome back. Nate Dreyer with Matt Wainer here from Holland. We're ready for this final frame here in just a second. Hope College and Zach Trainer on the field getting ready to go to work. The Flying Dutchman with a 1 TD lead over Loris as we go to the final 15 minutes. They'll spread them three wide. Trainer will give it to Strickland, the junior, stymied immediately right here on second down. Able to fight for about two yards off the line of scrimmage. And get it up to about a third and five right here for Hope coming up with 14.45 and less to go in this ball game. Looking back here for the third quarter as we were talking about a lot of Strickland, a lot of Smith. Strickland and Smith both with 99 yards apiece. Wow. Combining for 200 yards in this ball game. Harris adds another 51. It's 250 yards on the ground for Hope College. Trainer adding. Strickland looking to add to that, breaking it to the 20-yard line for the first down. He goes over 100 yards rushing on this game. Right on cue, proving your point with that run. The trainer with 129 in the air and two touchdowns. Man, that Hope College rushing tack. Too much for Loris today. On the other side of the ball, it's Britt with 70 yards. England with 73. I see a look at Strickland, good hole. He's able to strafe his way through that line of scrimmage as well. And we know him for his power at, you know, 6'2", over 225 pounds. But it's that burst of speed that he adds on as well. Elijah Smith will come into the backfield now. And Smith will get it right away with some speed. Swallowed up immediately by the inside of the defense as Milo Collier had the initial wrap-up in the stop and about a yard is all he'll get. Second and nine from the 20 on its way. 13 and a half minutes to go here from Smith Stadium on the campus of Hope College here in Holland. Loris coming in 1-0 off a thrilling win last week. Hope falling to nationally ranked Aurora to open up their season, trying to pick up a win in their home opener. Smith moving across the line along with Lumen here. Trainer give to Smith up the middle is fake throws it inside the five yard line secured by Hope Sir first and goal Hope College great long delay on the play action and a good delivery to Holzer for a first and goal great decision by Trainer and a great lead there for Hope College and got to consider I mean Trainer there you thought he was giving it to him able to find him there on the lead Hope with an opportunity to score. 12.45 and less than a first and goal from the two-yard line. Give Strickland up the middle. The junior pounding his way towards the goal line. He'll be just short. They'll need to try to pound him in once more right here. Second career 100-yard rushing game for Strickland. He had 131 yards versus Alma last season as a quarterback. Remember Strickland playing the quarterback position a year ago, so his second 100-yard rushing game, and I think he's going to have a lot more of that coming up in his transition to running back for the next couple years for uh, Coach Sturzma. Even being well scouted after this game, I think you see that that's the game plan, and that's, that's the beast that you can feed. 
Trainer, high snap over his head, chased down by Strickland, and Strickland able to save a turnover off the big mistake right there. And now it'll turn to first and goal back to around the 12 yard line as Hope in the process of throwing away a really big opportunity here. Gotta find a way to put points on the board here. Third and long to goal from the 11 yard, yard line. Gonna have to give Trainer an opportunity to get outside the pocket, see if he can do something. Haven't really seen Trainer on the ground at all. He hasn't rushed the ball at all today. He's had some pressure, but I think that's something he's still got in his skill set. Yeah, an athletic quarterback, like I, I think I mentioned earlier, a, a pocket passer in terms of his, his three-star rating and his recruiting process, but an athletic guy that certainly can still get out and move. Fakes to Strickland. Trainer to the end zone off his back foot. Out of the reach of the intended target. Holzer brings the kicking unit on, and that is just fine still for Hope because big field goal here to try to get it back up to a two-score game. Really not a bad look by Trainer there. Let's see what the penalty is here. Oh, I'm sorry, no penalty on the play. <laughs> it will be Balkan, though, coming in and trying to knock this one down. A 29-yard attempt here for the sophomore. He is unable to get that one to go. No good for Balkan. And there are now flags down on the field. There's a little bit of a mess on the inside there. And we'll have to see what this call exactly is going to be. But a missed field goal. And now Loris with a chance to knock the game again on this drive. Snapper. Defense, number wow. 98. Half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. What a gift. Hope hey. College bailed out. Huge gift. A roughing the snapper call. That is going to get a first down and half the distance to the goal here for Hope College. Renewed life after all the mistakes they made in that little sequence. They got a great chance. Hope College seemingly squandering an opportunity yeah. to be on the three-yard line first and goal to get no points to now have an opportunity to, to punch it in. I mean, what a game changer that, that, that call is. All right, trainer Strickland and company come out. They'll bring out Lumen. The 220-pound freshman is the power H-back right here. It's a first and goal from the five. Trainer give to Strickland, the junior, bouncing, driving, touchdown hope. What a job to execute on the second opportunity, and the junior pulls his way into the end zone. Massive, massive turn of events right there. Did not have any points on the board, and now go up two scores. Now with the extra point to be up 42-28. Huge with 11 minutes to go. We know that England's not done. Can't expect him to be done. Loris gave up 41 points a week ago. Balkan will try to come on and stretch it past that for Hope College here. Balkan adds one more, 42-28. Hope College, as Matt said, seemingly squandering a terrific opportunity. And we'll have a look right here at Lumen. This is power personified into the end zone. Strickland, you see the size, the decision making, the power. The guy who, like you said, playing quarterback last season to now, I think we see a, a, you know, a possible future 1,000-yard rushing season out of him would be a great season. I know it's challenging here in the MIAA, but he's a guy that they'll look to, to give the ball to 20 times a game as well as have Smith get the ball 10 to 15 times because that's the DNA of this Hope College offense. Absolutely, and we've seen it. Smith a touchdown. Strickland powering his way in here as well. I, I don't think Coach Sturzman and his staff could have uh, come away much happier, I think, with a lot of what this offense could do, especially, remember how it started, with an INT on their first drive of the game. They have rebounded in such impressive fashion, and the power run game that they have been able to show all game long, that plays regardless the opponent, regardless the weather. If you have a line, a big offensive line, blocking the way Hopes has, and you've got a couple of running backs that can make things happen for you, and a quarterback that can 
go off the play action and create off of that run game, that plays regardless who you're playing and what the conditions are. Balkan will send it away. Willis going to let it go again. And now, Loris, 11 minutes to go, Matt. Things aren't going to be rushed yet. There's a bit of commotion after the play, by the way, as there is potentially a bit of a late hit. Nothing going to be called in terms of a flag. But back to my point, Matt, 11 minutes to go, two-score game. We know this Loris offense likes to go fast already, so they won't be out of their element too much, but they still are in a position that they have to score A, but they do have to score efficiently B. Exactly, and I think England's probably going to want to push the ball downfield a yeah. little bit more. you got to expect that Hope College knows that man coverage they have not had a ton of success in today. So we'll see what England tries to do to go downfield. Fake handoff, and he'll throw it to his red shirt, senior Michael Crawford, who corrals the grab for about five on first down. They've looked to Brown in particular down the field quite often on those deep shots like uh, what you just talked about. But this offense, happy to go quickly. Jamel Britt is the tailback in to begin this drive. England will give it to him. Britt grinding for a couple yards. It'll be a third and short coming up. Hope defense, good job. They have really turned around their ability to stop the run game. I mean, the first half we saw the ability for Loris to move the ball via the run game quite a bit. They're going to go quickly right here on the third and one. That could not be more true, Nate. And consider, if your whole college game plan remains the same, you've just got to keep that ball in front of you. You can get five, you can get six, you just can't give up 20-yard plays. They move Mounty Brown into the slot right here on a bit of a change before the snap. Third and one for the Dewhawks. England to pass. Looking deep, looking for Brown. Unable to make a grab, reaching over top of Sam Cochran. The junior, good coverage. And it'll be fourth down and one. And it looks like the offense is staying out right here for Coach Helmeniak. Or maybe not. They hesitated a little bit. Now they'll punt it away. And now with 9.55 to go, Hope's offense in a position to start to put this thing away. I don't know if you saw England stood out there saying he wanted an opportunity. He thought he could get three there. Just looking at the clock here, under 10 to play, down two scores. Hope College with a rushing game. You need Hope College to give you the ball back with, with, with seven to play, I would think, if you can get a stop here. Terrell Harris going to let it go. I think a wise decision made once again by Kenny. They are not going to let that ball get anywhere near mm -hmm. Terrell Harris after his earlier exploits in the punt return game. So this is, this is ball game defining right here. Hope College scores. This game is all but wrapped up. If there's a, a quick three and out, Loris with another opportunity and they can bang score, and you got six minutes to play down seven, totally different ball game. These next few minutes are really key in deciding the way that this ball game's going to go. And in particular, Hope College wanting to take their time and run the ball down the field, that works just as well too. So what they want to do offensively sets up perfectly for the situation. Elijah Smith, the senior out of Hastings, will be the starting running back here along with the freshman out of Wald Lake Western, Zach Trainer. It's a delayed give to Smith. He's wrapped up in the backfield immediately. Nowhere to go whatsoever is Preston Prechusek. The junior hauls him down four yards behind the line of scrimmage. Loris right now with eight men in the box. They got four up front, and they got four linebackers just changing their look to say they know that, that that's what they got to do to be able to make a stop right now and knowing that they're going to give the ball to Smith or Strickland. Yeah, this is a team that had to play a lot in kind of more nickel and dime sort of packages last week defensively against a Benedictine team that was willing to throw the ball quite a bit. The exact opposite out of hope this week. This is Elijah Smith again lowering the head and twisting to get about half of what was lost on first down back, but now still a third and long. They'll get him back to the original line of scrimmage even, but a third and ten facing hope with 854 and less, and this is the one exact thing that Hope couldn't have happen on this drive. Flying Dutchman at their own 28 with 840 and less in the fourth quarter, and Trainer is going to spread them out four wide right here, so they're likely going to put it on the arms and the legs of the freshman. Trainer 
with a bit of time. Goes over the middle. He got Brody Thompson. He's got the first down. The freshman slipping into the open field. Down to the 35. Brody wow. Thompson again on third down. That's a massive completion by Trainer. As he looks a little bit shaken up in the backfield there. He is, and here's a look. Thompson breaking a tackle and speeding into the open field, but the attention of this stadium is also going to have to be back on Zach Trainer, who has come to the attention of the training staff. He's back to his feet. He's trying to walk it off right now a little bit. We'll see if Trainer's going to be good to go in the long term, but it looks like he may not continue this drive. So now this really changes things because Trainer leaving the field. It's going to put Ben Wellman, the junior, again, like I said, there were a long list of quarterbacks that were in this battle for the quarterback position this year for uh, this Hope College team and Coach Sturzma, and it will be Wellman, the junior out of Bloomington, Illinois, to take the controls of the offense, first and 10 from the Loris 37. Harrison motion, they fake it to him. Read option keeper for about a yard right there. So Wellman, a guy with maybe a little bit more of a running game built in than trainer, right away they show it off right there. Wellman comes out of the game, and here comes trainer back in. All right, so trainer able to shake it off, just have to leave the field for the one play that he was sent off for, and it will be a second down and nine after a gain of one for Wellman. 7.46 and less to go. Can't reiterate how massive that, that completion was there on third down by Trainer to Thompson. Elijah Smith again, lowering the head and driving inside the 30-yard line. It'll be a third and one coming up for Hope College and easy to convert right here with their power run game. Watching that clock milk a little bit. See if they can get it under seven before this next play. A game that we have seen so many paces used out of the offense, in particular Loris, the first two drives of the game at absolute warp speed down the field. And these last couple drives out of Hope College, milking the clock down, running the football. Elijah Smith will change hips of his quarterback and Trainer will pass on third down, throwing, looking for Holzer. Jump ball grab, intercepted, no, incomplete. Brett Bauer nearly had the deflection for the pick in the end zone. The grad senior unable to hang on to it, and it'll be fourth down, a dangerous shot on fourth and two right there, and we'll take a look at it. You see good ball there by Trainer getting up to Holzer, a little bit of contact there. Oh, almost a change of events there. So college making a decision about what to do here on fourth and three. What a moment. What a chance for Bauer, just unable to pick that one off. Trainer in the offense will stay out on fourth and two. They'll load it up with an extra offensive lineman here. They'll give it to Strickland. He's got the first down. He'll drag it over the 25 yard line. Keep milking that clock. They know what they're doing now. They've been in this position before, as in last year. Just taking 25 seconds at a time. Terrific drive continuing for Hope, and once again, it's it's been executing on second chances they've been given. The last drive certainly with the second chance at the goal line, and now here the second chance after the dropped interception, keeping things charging forward to the 25-yard line, and they're going to leave the big junior Strickland in out of a three-wide receiver set. That's Castle the H back in motion. It's Strickland on the give, right up the middle, over the 20, lowering the shoulder, down to the 15, but the ball is free. The ball is free. It's Josh Rydberg picking it up down the near side, and Loris has got the football. Wow. Huge, huge there for Loris to have an opportunity now with six to play. And that's college football for you, Nate. Mistake from Hope College again on the offensive side of the ball. This time they do finally turn it over. They've been trying to turn it over a couple times on these last few drives. They finally do it here. And now Evan England and company are given an opening. Down two scores with six minutes to go. This is a turbocharged offense and they're going to be looking to roll down the field. Johnny Quezon, the more speed back receiving back is in alongside England. 
Evan England, the junior, out of Wheaton, Illinois, dumps it off in the flat for Jaheim Haynes. He's leveled at the 45-yard line. He'll have the first, and a late penalty marker is in. May have been a targeting call there on Sam Cochran, the junior free safety. The officials will meet and will wait. Cochran absolutely leveled him. And we'll wait to get their call here in just a moment. Coach Sturzma has found his way onto the field a little bit to try to have the discussion the official, and we'll have a look at the replay right here. Haynes the grab, the big hit from Cochran, and yeah, there's a chance. There was potentially some helmet to helmet on the lowering blow right there, and that's exactly what I think the officials are talking about right here. A potentially game changing call to some extent right here. Let's take a look at it one more time. Matt, what are you seeing? That's what the referees decide. They're going to get a targeting call. Automatic first down. You have targeting call on Cochran is called. You see the blow that the call comes from right there. Hope fateful in their side. Not throw, but again, the lowering head helmet hit right there from Cochran. They're going to call that most of the time. So Hope will give up the free first down. And immediately, Loris will spread the field five wide on their first and 10 inside the 39, or inside the 40 to the 39. Anglins, pressure coming, down he goes. And that's what you need from the leader, Ackerman. Nate, after this massive momentum change that happened in the last minute, got the turnover on the fumble to the penalty, and Ackerman comes in and slows it down here for Hope College. Ackerman the stuff, but you saw pretty much the entire offensive line is right there too. Parlberg coming off the edge as part of the stop right there. England on second and 17 to pass, dumps over the middle, corralled through contact from Lumen by the, the tight end Tedro on the grab. It'll become a third and 12 with five minutes to go and a two score deficit as it's gonna be spread five wide for the Dewhawks. England, the juniors, got to go to work quickly right here. We take under 4.50 to go. England looking deep for Brown. Out of his reach, fourth down and 12. They call five again on the play call down the field. Pass out of his reach. And Hope in terrific, terrific position to get the football back. Fourth and 12 for the Dewhawks. Hope College can stay stout. I'm here, Coach Pardonet getting excited on the sideline as the entire coaching staff getting the crowd up here at Ray and Sue Smith Stadium for a massive play. It's everything but the ball game now. Maybe one of the deciding plays or the deciding play we'll look at at the end of the game. Anglin, the drop to pass on fourth and 12. Going deep, he's got Brown all alone, and he'll drag out of bounds. First down. They're able to find again the terrific junior in the open field, and he'll move the chains. Calm, confident in the pocket is England. That's a big play. Absolutely. We go under four and a half minutes to go. The clock becoming increasingly the enemy right now of Loris College. Jamil Brett back in, in the backfield. They go to the four wide set right here. The tight end Tedro the man all the way out wide to the right side in this formation they'll motion him England to pass again looking for Brown got it again to the 15 yard line just short of the first down they'll continue to target number five wait it looks like the ball came free it's incomplete Brown unable to survive the ground Caleb Dean the hit and the coverage it'll be second and ten Four oh one to go in the fourth. 42-28 Hope hanging on to the two-score lead, and England will go to work at the controls of the Dewhawk offense once more. England throwing to Tedro. The tight end's got it up shy of the 15-yard line, makes it third and very manageable right here for Loris. Good job with the clock management so far by England. They're getting out of bounds. Smart play right there by Tedjo, able to get it out of bounds. 
Harrison Willis will check in as they'll go four wide with the receivers on third down. Hope with a two score lead, under 3.40 to go. England. Pressure coming, flush from the pocket. England to run, penalty marker down behind the play, looking for the end wow. zone. Caught, touchdown, but we'll have to wait and see what the penalty marker is. It's in the backfield. I think this one is going to be coming back, and it is. Referee gets holding call, but doesn't take away from Nate. Really nice one-handed catch by Brown. Bone made the reception holding. in the end zone, Offense, however. Number 72, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. Third down. So holding penalty will bring this one back and take the touchdown off the board. Another break right there for Hope down the stretch in this game. Of course, the hold is what allowed England to get free to eventually make the pass down the field. But Hope again giving second a second chance this time on defense. The offense has done a very good job reacting to second chances. The defense looking to do the same on what now is third and 16. England going short to Brown, wrestled down immediately at the 21-yard line by Brady Howe. Another fourth down to convert right here for the Dewhawks. And again, the whole game comes down to one play for the Loris offense. Junior Evan Englund with Junior Britt to his hip. Englund, pressure coming, down he goes, ball loose. free, Hope's on it. That's 55, Connor Nekliski, the fifth year senior on the defensive line with one of the biggest plays of the game. Let's take a look at it one more time. Nikliski getting free, blind side, down he goes. Hope football, a two-score lead, and that should just about put a period on this one. And Laura still with three timeouts, an opportunity to stop the clock. We expect Hope to go to the run game three times here, see how much time they can take off the clock in this drive, and wow. Nate Dreyer, I could not be more impressed with the way that this defense has showed out here in the second half. Yeah, I have to fully agree with you. Elijah Smith, big hole right up the middle of the field to the 40-yard line. Smith will flip the field position on one play. And the clock will keep churning down right here. We'll be right around under two minutes by the time they get this ball snapped again. And look at this big hole and big, big speed out of the senior. Defensive line gambling there on running back power to the left side. And Smith just finds that hole, cuts it up. Just a terrific game from both Smith and Strickland today. Uh, you are going to be, I think, hard-pressed to find a much better duo of running backs in the MIAA than what Coach Sturzman is going to have to work with this year. This is Smith able to get one yard past the 40-yard line, but if they can continue to have this power and lightning combo, it's going to be scary. A timeout on the field, two-score lead for Hope. We will be right back. All right, welcome back. 158 to go. Nate Dreyer with Matt Wainer here from Holland. Ray and Sue Smith Stadium. Two score lead. And what an impressive performance closing into the final two minutes by Hope College. The way they turned this thing around on both sides of the ball and have been able to seemingly rally to what looks like their first win of the season. This is a give to Elijah Smith again, and he's bodied immediately, but a penalty marker is down right after the contact. The senior Dirts made the stop, but we'll wait to see what this penalty marker is. Up, 
Holding. Offense, number 76. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Correction. The penalty has been declined. Third down. So holding penalty on the offense declined by the Loris defense as they try to, uh, as they are obviously fighting downs more than distance right now. And they also are going to take this opportunity to call one more timeout. 152 to go. 42, 28, Hope over Loris. We will take a timeout as well. My name is Megan Bigelow, and during my time there, I was on the Hope women's soccer team. I decided to choose Hope because of the opportunity to be involved in multiple things. I didn't want to go somewhere where I was just a number in the field. I was able to double major, experience both a business academic load as well as economics. I loved the opportunity to really get to know my professors. Hope exceeded my expectations. I'm Nate Bauman. As an invested community partner, we're proud to help share Hope's stories of transformational impact. All right, welcome back. 42-28. Hope the lead with a third and eight coming up inside. Two minutes to go. Nate, Matt, back with you. And Trainer and company get ready to go to work. First down can all but ice this one on away. Just one timeout remaining for the Dewhawks. Trainer fake give. He'll throw it. The freshman unable to find Harris. A little bit rushed right there with pressure and the blitz coming from Brandon Phelps off the outside. Now fourth and eight and the clock stops. And it looks like Coach Sturzma's going to leave the offense out here for this fourth and eight. Kind of in no man's land. Or maybe not. So get them off the field and they'll bring the punting unit out as they're going to try to pin Loris deep right here in their own territory with 147 to go. Not a bad decision. Probably just like a try a little pooch punt, see if they can keep it out of the end zone. Again, Flagler and Dean will get ready to send it away. And it's Brocious standing back at his own five yard line to return. Laura still with one timeout here left in this game. This one whistled down before the snap. And I think it's going to be, it will be a delay of game penalty against Hope College. So that'll not actually be the end of the world in some ways. Buys it five more yards of uh, comfort to be able to boot this one away to some extent. We've seen teams kind of do that. I don't know if this was on purpose, but we've seen teams do that on purpose in the past to buy them a little bit more space to get a little bit less awkward of a punt off. Again, Flegler, Dean will be the dual punters. And it will be Flegler. The lefty has got a high tumbler. Brocious will fair catch at the 12, so they pin him inside the 15-yard line. Here comes Anglin and company. 140 to go, down two scores, and this offense, which has shown a level of comfort going down the field, is going to have to certainly do that now. Look for Brown again on the outside, and then you got his security blanket and Crawford underneath. Something I was really thinking that after they had success earlier in the game, those one-on-one -on -one matchups, thought England would have gone into the air a little bit more downfield. Nonetheless... All the credit in the world out to Hope College for a, tradition, for a tremendous second half effort. Especially with the defense that's so nicked up and so inexperienced because of that in this contest. England is going to tuck it against the pressure. He's being chased by Lumen. He found that security blanket. Michael Crawford along the sideline about two yards short of the first down. 134 to go as the clock stops for a moment here in the fourth. It'll be England again, and again, they'll spread them four wide. The tailback is Britt. They'll give it to Britt on the screen. It was tipped very well done by Nikliski off the edge to get his big paw on that one, and it's third down. Exactly 90 seconds to go, and Hope's defense in a good position. Third and two right here trying to come up with the stop. Of course, the Dewhawks in the four down territory. They trail by two scores with a minute and a half to go. And they'll spread them four wide right here. Evan Anglin, the junior, will go to work from the gun. Pressure coming from Hope. Defense momentarily picks it up. Now they don't. Down he goes. Anglin sacked again. A pair of flying Dutch defenders all over him. Caleb Parlberg, the sophomore out of Caledonia at the bottom of the pile. We'll see if. Loris wants to take their last time out here. They might just. 
So we'll just try and run it here, see if they can get a playoff quickly. They're going to go here, fourth down with a minute six and less to go. Loris needs to move the ball. They'll go back to the four wide set. Anglent dropping, firing, caught, turning up the field. Haynes, he's got just enough to move the chains, 54 seconds on the clock. And now Loris will call their final timeout. Their final timeout will stay with you through this timeout. Set up one more time. I mean, again, just to recap, I want to focus on this Hope defense because the offense certainly also had their ups and downs, but a little more, you know, they were able to move the ball. They just were put in some poor positions early. This defense, for the first two drives for Loris to move the ball the way they did, and again, an inexperienced team that's a little bit nicked up defensively, to make the adjustments they did and turn things around the way they did for this sort of second-half defensive performance. Yes, they, I mean, giving up 28 points, when you spot them 14 right away, shows how impressive a defensive performance this was by a lot of youngsters in this Hope defense. Yeah, I really think you can't give enough credit to these defensive coaches, Coach Pardonay and Coach Telfor. Both guys that I know and played here at Hope College, uh, they're young guys and they did really a terrific job today making the adjustments they needed to. Bunch of receivers left. England looking left side and it's hauled in by Brown. Nope, it's incomplete. Unable to survive on that one. Bryce Debris out there on part of the coverage. He nearly had a chance to pick that one off on the throw. Clock stops with 48 seconds to go. It's second and 10. Two-score lead for Hope. Coach Sturzman's squad getting ready to go to 1-1 one one on the year. The same can be said for Coach Helmeniak's team and Loris after they won week one and a good bounce back for Hope College with a really strong performance here in this early part of the season. The non-conference play off the edge. Nikliski is in there again for another sack off the blind side. Again, third and long and under 35 seconds to go. And if you're a Hope College fan, so much to be optimistic about. A freshman quarterback and a great run game by Strickland, Smith, Terrell Harris, all impacting the game on the offensive side. If you're a Loris fan, there's a lot to go home on that six-hour drive and think about the ways to make adjustments heading into conference play. England stepping up and running and wrestled down from behind. Fourth down coming up, less than 10 seconds. We'll see if they try to rush to one more play. That will not be the case. 42-28, Hope College with the bounce back. A tough one last week on the road, but their home opener goes as well as you could hope for. Within this one, they had to go through some wars. A really impressive performance, though, from Hope. They win by a couple of scores, and the Flying Dutchmen are 1-1. One one. Great game there. We said enough here today, Nate Dreyer, about the ways that these coaches made adjustments in the middle of the game, a game they were down 14-0. It looked like it was going to be a runaway for Loris in Hope College. Battled back, made the adjustments they needed to to walk away with a beautiful win against a great football team. And again, and it was 14-0, Loris with the football again. The defense answered. Here's the replay of the play of the game for certain. A now record-breaking return for Terrell Harris the longest return on the punt in the history of Hope College football breaks a 40-year record streaking down the sideline and Harris is certainly a part of history now as we'll work our way through more of these highlights. This is Chance Strickland bowling his way into the end zone as well and Trainer finds our man of the game Harris for one more right here in the defense. Matt making so many plays down the stretch as well. That INT a big one. Elijah Smith bursting into the open field for his big run. That was the one that really set off this charge, the second half charge that Hope certainly was able to put together in this ball game. Ackerman on the defensive side of the ball, so incredible. Zach Trainer once again, the freshman, threw a pick on the first drive of the game, but rebounded so incredibly well. Brody Thompson on third down, making big grabs. On the kick returns like this, able to help change the field position so much. This Hope attack found so many different ways to do it. You love the development of Zach Trainer, and you love the run game. What Strickland was able to do, what Smith was able to do, this whole team really was able to put it together in a big, big fashion today. As we continue to work through those highlights for you, a couple of ending stats here through four quarters of play. Elijah Smith, 
18 carries for 142 yards, 139 yards, sorry, and a touchdown. And Strickland on 25 carries, 127 yards and two touchdowns. Harris with 46 yards on the day. Trainer with 11 of 21 for 181 yards and two touchdowns. Receivers, it was Brody Thompson, four catches for 83 yards. Wow. Holzer with four of 56. And I feel like, sorry to interrupt, but I feel like almost all of those catches for Thompson were third down conversions as well. That exactly. was the kind of day he had. They had that third down Thompson connection. Looking at Loris, it was Britt with 71 yards on the day, and it was England with 34 yards. There's so many yards for him were, were on sacks late in the game as he was really trying to make something work. He was 26 of 39 for 278 and three touchdowns, giving up six sacks. So you'd like to think that's something that Loris needs to correct in this next week is their offensive line not giving up so many sacks. I mean, what a wonderful job by the defensive line of Hope College. Absolutely. What a performance from Hope. And the Flying Dutchman move to 1-1. One one. Loris College, who had the early advantage in this one. They fall. They go to 1-1 one one as they've played a couple of really tough games early on in this season. We're back on the air next week, by the way, right here on the Hope Athletics YouTube pages. There's a couple home games in a row coming up for the Flying Dutchman. A great performance all around from Hope. Both sides of the ball. They kept it going deep down the stretch in this one for Matt Wainer. I am Nate Dreyer. Thank you so much for joining us here this afternoon. This has been Hope College Football.